Hello everyone, this is David. This, oh, sorry. This is Cameron. This is Nathan. <laughs> and we are the commentators, and we're getting a little prestigious this week. We have, well, I have chosen, since it is WrestleMania weekend, I want yeah. to pick a film about a wrestler. Now, what would be a good film about a wrestler? No holds barred. Maybe next time. This is The Wrestler. That's right, Darren Ar Aronofsky's 2008 release starring Mickey Rourke. Also and known as Nanny with Muscles. Nanny with Muscles, yes. And also stars Are you telling me that The Wrestler is a movie about a wrestler? Yeah, ho holy shit. Whoa. Whoa. And... And as you just saw, that this was this did play at the Fenice. It did Golden Lion. I believe it actually did win that. It maybe did, maybe it did. I don't know. But basically, this is a prestigious film, right? Mickey Rourke and Marissa Tomei were nominated for Academy Awards for Best Actor in a Leading Role and Best Actress in a Supporting Role. And actually, right there, that image of Mickey Rourke as Randy the Ram, that's Lex Luger's body. And they just put Mickey Rourke's they face on it. Mickey Rourke's face on it. Yeah. <laughs> Now, would it be wrong of me to just want this entire commentary to be Cameron doing the Macho Man Randy Savage voice the entire time? Oh, no, not at all. Because that's, that's really what I want to hear for the next hour and a half, is just Cameron doing Macho Man. And, of course, what I love, the, just the buildup of it, is just seeing this, all these past issues of these, like, really famous, like, remember PWI Wrestling yeah. Illustrated, stuff like that? You can definitely see these referenced throughout it. Yeah, it's a very quick, simple, easy way to set up your character, you know, without too much, uh, you know, exposition yeah. and stuff like that. Through the images, is just showing that this was a guy who was the top of the game. And they mentioned the Ayatollah, that's supposed to be a reference to the Iron Sheik. The the fuck that I'm the that I'm no good piece of shit, motherfucker. Fuck. Fucking bullshit. He fucking took my coke. <laughs> he took my coke. It's nice to see all these images of young, good looking Mickey Rourke. Yeah. And actually, he got his face fucked up. True, true, true. <laughs> very true. Now, the thing is, there are a bunch of wrestlers in this film, actual wrestlers. And the thing is, the Ayatollah is played by Ernest the Cat Miller, mm -hmm. who I have to admit, I've always been a big fan of his. In fact, when I went to go see. The last Halloween Havoc that was here in Las Vegas in 2000, the crowd went nuts for Ernest the Cat. They also booed the shit out of Booker T, by the way. They, they love Scott Steiner. <laughs> yes, yes, Steiner. And now Darren Aronofsky mentioned this is his, you know, first film after The Fountain, which was a personal pet project of his. I, I really, I think The Fountain is a really underrated movie. So do it, I. It got, it, I don't want to say it bombed <laughs> at the box office, but it didn't do well. Yeah. And didn't get, I don't know, great reviews, but I really like it a lot. I think it's a great movie. And I just love how it cuts from all the the, you know, the noise and the adoration and all that, and you cut to him. And he's in this little, this little kid's schoolhouse. I love yeah. this, this schoolroom. It's and, great. It's and, a great image. Exactly. And just how he's just a small image now, just this little, and his back is turned. And what I love about it, because Cameron, you pointed out this out to me, uh, this was shot by Maurice Alberti, who... If memory serves, it's a woman cinematographer, mm -hmm. yeah. and that they shot this without any storyboard. Yeah, no, and no shot list. And another another filmmaker who I know who does that is Ang Lee. So when you watch something like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, no storyboarding. Which is interesting because you watch a lot of Ang Lee movies, and you, it seems very meticulous and very yeah. particular in the shots. But yeah. if he doesn't do storyboards, it's mm -hmm. like wow. <laughs> and now, well, oh, the thing with this movie is there are. So there's a lot of people in the wrestling community who think it goes over the top and just showing. Yes, we'll talk about that. But it's like that. after you uh, hit the peak and then go on, on your way down. And I both agree and disagree with that sentiment because there are a lot of wrestlers who fucked up their lives badly. Oh, absolutely. Not, I mean, not all of them. I mean, you know, the, you know, the late, great, legendary, you know, Randy Savage. People might assume that, you know, you know if you, you know, hadn't seen him for a while, that, oh, man, he must have lost all his money. Randy was cheap. And that yeah. paid off, man, because he didn't need to work. <laughs> yeah. And I love that. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, did they repaint, like, one of the, the WWF figures from 1998? Mm -hmm. You know those yeah, No, it, it would have to be one of the uh, Attitude Era ones, because yeah. the ones from the early 80s, they were yeah. so solid, and that one has a, that one has articulation. Yeah. If, if I ever get famous enough that I get an action figure of myself, I'm definitely putting it on my dashboard. I am making sure car. that for the Murder Cost movie, there will be yeah. action figures. <laughs> now, the, the, there's this recurrent image that we see throughout it where we, we go from behind, like the, the character watching them go up somewhere. And if anything, there are many shots of it that does not only him, but Marissa Tomei's character, where you're essentially following the characters as they go out to perform or what have you. That you're sort of like part of this documentary crew 
going along with these people, just finding out. Well, yeah, because usually you on. really want to see your your actors' faces because you know they're yeah. the you know they're the main part of the movie, like the yeah. driving force. And usually you'd want to see their faces, but it's yeah. interesting to kind of get a back end yeah. perspective. And it does feel like that you're actually there with the characters that you're mm -hmm. filming alongside them. Yeah. It could have been, and he did. I'm mentioning name dropping him because he did pass away a while back. It could have been something like the, you know, Albert Mazel's, you know, the Mazel's brothers could have done something like that. Now, the, the thing is, when it comes to the look that Mickey Rourke brings to it, I mean, I have to admit, when I first saw him, I immediately thought of somebody like Diamond Dallas Page yeah. with like the long blonde bleached hair. That if anyone remember, and then what's interesting about that because when DDP became a professional wrestler, he was quite old, mm -hmm. getting into the game. I want to see him beat up Lenny now for not letting him into his trailer. Yes, yeah. and give him the chair, <laughs> and the Ram Jam. <laughs> and speaking of DDP, and when he began, he began with way too many gimmicks. Yeah, and the man who told him that was Randy Savage. Yep, it all goes around, man. Give us a little Randy Savage, Cameron, please. Yeah. I'm, I'm begging. I'm eating pizza. Come on, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And once again, this is just the way of showing, like, through. Because this is. I always find these kind of films very underrated in terms of its sound mixing, and that is how we open up and, like, the music, the adoration of the crowd, and the announcers talking about how mm. great he is and how he's battling the Ayatollah and he's going to win and all that. And now it's like with how it's done with the sound effects. It sounds very, you know, sparse and gives to how sad the whole situation is. This was a guy who was on top of the world and now he's living, well, was living in a trailer and now he's living in his goddamn fan. And it's really, really sad. It's weird, but the long hair doesn't make me think of DDP. It makes me think of Flair. You know, a like, set, like late 70s, 80s Flair where he, where he actually had, you know, really long hair. Oh, yeah. And of course, uh, Randy's life in this reminds me a lot of, um, Jake the Snake Roberts' life oh, before DDP helped him with yes. you, know, you know get his life back, and that's de that's definitely the case because there's going to be a character introduced, uh, his daughter. We get to in this film, which does remind you remind me very much of um, Jake the Snake's relationship with his daughter, especially when it was used in this documentary called uh, Beyond the Mat, directed mm -hmm. by Barry Blaustein, which however, I definitely recommend people check out. However, when you also uh, talk to uh, when you know. Well, something else that Jake said is the reason. Another one of the reasons that his relationship with his daughter uh, uh, faded away was because of the kind of man his father was. And he was worried that deep down he was the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is still a good little. This is a good little moment, though. Just like you know, just to show you that you know he's going through shit, but he's mm -hmm. still there's a good man inside. Yeah, there he's still a nice guy. That he still likes to wrestle around with the kids. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he raised with the children. Yeah, that's a whole Hulk Hogan yeah. thing, yeah. What would he call it? What would they call it? Did they have any names? The Ramamaniacs? No. The Ramaniacs? The Rampagers. <laughs> there oh. you go. <laughs> oh, and right there, the guy who plays Lenny, that's a Darren Aronofsky uh, regular. Mm. That's Mr. Chicken Dance from Ace Ventura. Mm. <laughs> there he is. He's like, ah, oh, whatever. And of course, everybody knows from Breaking Bad, right? Oh, of Mr. course. I forgot his name, Named but he's... It Mark Mark... Margolis. Margolis. Mark yes. Margolis. I was about ding, to ding, got, ding. That's the you're not talking with a bell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but once we go back to the shot again, and it does seem that... that way where it's like, it's once again how much sound, and also the visual are playing an importance to this role, that it, this film, just how it really exemplifies just how things have gotten to the shits for him. Now he's stuck to working at a grocery store. Now, who's the the actor who plays this, Cameron? Todd Berry. And who is Todd Berry? Stand-up comedian. Now, the funny thing is, Darren Aronofsky went on Howard Stern and talked about this. That was supposed to be Artie Lang. Artie Lang actually gave him a really good audition, but he decided against it because he was afraid people would really know Artie Lang from Howard Stern and not do anything about it. He would be too it. recognizable and yeah. take them out of the movie. That makes, that makes sense. Imagine that. the chipper, the manager. <laughs> Chip Chipperson is the manager. I don't think the manager is supposed to represent all those, you know, um, and I don't care if it sounds mean for saying all those assholes like to look down at professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. Is it being substandard and yeah. an idiotic form of entertainment? Because the way he treats Randy comes across as so egotistical, like f wrestling. Mm -hmm. Shh. And these are all actual wrestlers who are around him right now. 
Which makes sense. I mean, because I mean, if you're going to make a movie about wrestling, of course, hire real wrestlers because mm-hmm. they've they've already got the body type. They're yep. already strong and built. And I'm in a way, in a way, because you know, I, I mean, not just the wrestling itself, but building up your character and stuff. Yeah. There is an acting element to it. So I mean, putting them in a movie is a good way for them to you know become better actors or you know, and then not to mention the, their, yeah, you know, and not to stuff. mention the fact that there are a lot of because in wrestling you do have to per- perform. An act. Yeah, you have exactly. To yeah, make them yeah. believe that you hate the other guy, mm-hmm. which in real life actually might be the case. Backstage politics. <laughs> Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, He's stuff like that. Randy Savage and Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, exactly. And th- there have been you know wrestlers who have made good transitions into film. I mean, this Wrong. past year we had Dave Bautista do a really good job oh, of Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. The Rock, of and course. he's going to be in uh, the new James Bond movie mm-hmm. as the Which Henchman. The trailer came out uh, at, as of this recording. Yeah, and big trailer. Nathan trailer. peed himself, so I have to get away. From I, him. I, I peed myself just yeah. a little bit. And just even though bit. even though his career isn't as big as it, sh- as it should be, Roddy Piper. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. They live, and he's also great every time you see him on it's on it's always sunny in Philadelphia. He's hilarious. <laughs> he's hilarious. And, That's right. Now. The, Oh God, Mickey Rourke was. I mean, what's wonderful about Mickey is just how natural he is. Mm-hmm. It's like almost every word that you comes out of that man's mouth. He was, you just he was in so many movies, and then just kind of fell off the face of the earth. And you know, he did his. Uh, he went into boxing for a little bit and stuff, yeah. and then had this this, this very slow kind of build up comeback. He was in, I think. Uh, uh, a couple of Robert Rodriguez movies, and then he was yeah. in Sin City. Well, that was, and then I think yeah. this came in, was it a year after that or three, something? Three was, years after three Sin years? City. Okay. Which is, that's, then, yeah, it was just this big, huge Mickey Rourke yeah. comeback. You know. but, but that was what was so strange to me, was that when they were talking about, oh, it's the big comeback, it's the big comeback, and I thought to myself, what about Sin City? Because he got, I thought he was wonderful in that movie. Oh, yeah, but, absolutely. But what's... There's, but he's also uh, covered up now, by a shitload of makeup, so you can't really right, tell that it's now, Ricky. What you're seeing right now is the bare minimum of a match plan that most wrestlers do. Yep. Going back to the Macho Men's Yeah! <laughs> he would get ultra detailed with him when he wrestled. Like, oh. mind numbingly detailed. But you want to know why Randy Savage is a legendary wrestler who I can honestly say I've never seen him put on a shitty match in his prime? Yeah. And I say his prime goes all the way up until the whole Wolfpack thing. Mm-hmm. He oh. never put on a shitty match up until he came back from that injury. And because he planned each and every one out meticulously. And what you just saw was just what we call blading. blading. That's when you take like a little blade and what you oh. do is you, if you want to get a little more heat, what you do is you just scrape it across your forehead and blood will come gushing out. Now, Mick Foley, his one big... Now, to those who don't know Mick Foley, know being Cactus Jack, Mankind, Dude, mm-hmm. Love. His, one of best his issues... Best-selling author. Best-selling author. One of his, <laughs> yeah. And actually, when he does act, he's pretty, pretty mm-hmm. darn good. But one and of the things he... stand-up. Yeah. And one of the things he did mention that he had an issue with is the fact that during this match, you'll see that Randy blades himself. <laughs> now, because the reason why he has an issue is that Randy's supposed to be this, you know, big star, like a Hulk Hogan mm-hmm. kind of character. Yeah. And... Fully believes that. Well, if you're that big star, you don't have to go blade yourself in a you know little gymnasium with that. But I would argue that the reason why he's doing that is that he's in such a bad state in his life that he wants to do anything to get noticed, and, to go out there and, and get over the for the crowd so he'll blade himself. And it's not only that, but I, as much as I like Fully, I disagree with him on one thing. I want to name mention one wrestler mm-hmm. who's I can't think of a time where. When he was active, he was not at the top mm-hmm. or considered a legend. Wow. Flair. Hmm. That, that guy would blade if he sneezed. <laughs> that was like the worst. It's like, if you ever see what Ric Flair or Dusty Rhodes, what they look like, their, their foreheads look like, look like garbage, look like cauliflower. <laughs> the Crimson Mask, damn it! Damn it, the Crimson Mask once again! <laughs> Now but, um, I haven't watched uh, any of the special features for this movie. Did the, Do you know, did Mickey Rourke do a lot of He's training, all, like the, to do the move, because like, he's, like, he's he always did. been in really good shape. But he did. He actually trained with one of the the these guys are Hall of Famers. The I think it was Afa of the Wild Samoans mm-hmm. that he trained him. Mm-hmm. And the thing about Afa is that he's part of that big Samoan dynasty, which is you've got The Rock, Yokosuna, Rikishi, and this WrestleMania weekend Roman, Roman Reigns, Reigns, who's in the main event. It's this. It's a wonderful family dynasty, and what you see here is. For the most part, Mickey oh, performing his own, too. and the Usos. I forgot Rikishi's kids. That what you've got here is a great 
you know, family dynasty. And what you're seeing with Mickey is he's actually performing his own wrestling moves. Now, the one thing I'll point out, because you saw some of the stuff he does. Uh-huh. If he did that in the 80s, good Lord. You know who did do that in the 80s? Or what are you talking about now? Or what happens in the hardcore stuff? Oh, the 80s. Well, he was you know doing a couple did, you moves. You know who did, st- who did stuff like what he does? The Bulldogs? Randy. Oh, yeah, true. And I'm trying to recall. I can't. I mean, Randy Savage. I'm yeah. not. Ra- and um, <laughs> not just any old Randy. Well, he is named Randy in this movie. <laughs> but have you ever heard of um, this really good blading story that Bret Hart told about um, when he had the match with a uh, uh, Piper? And yeah, a Mania. Because what you saw is pretty obvious. Yeah. He bladed himself. Mm, yeah. yeah, and it was really obvious. He's bleeding in that match. But the thing was, at the time, Vince McMahon had this thing where he did not want blood on his programs at all. This is obviously before the Attitude Era. And he said, and if anybody blades, and I catch you blading, I am fining you, like, what, five grand? Because like violence that? is okay, but yeah. gore, oh, no. Yeah, but, Can't have any of that. <laughs> so, on this WrestleMania, um, Brett blades himself, and of course, Ric Flair oh, had a Ram match. Jam. To- Give him the Ram Jam! And Ric Flair had a match that uh, night, too. I don't remember who it was w- against. Who was that? It was Flair. Flair and Randy Savage and Hart and Roddy Piper. Okay. Now, both of them bled that night, but only, if I remember Hart telling the story (laughs) right, Hart was the one who bladed, but Vince believed it was real. Because he bladed, like, at this part above the the, the hairline, Mm -hmm. because it made it look like he bled the hard way. Yeah, and um, so that's what happened there. Flair didn't blade. He He obviously cutting his goddamn forehead. Yeah, but not that night. Not the, at WrestleMania no, eight. That, that, that's I think that's part of the that's part of the no story no that, WrestleMania. He was blading no, himself. That's not what Brett, I believe when I've read the story. That's not what Brett said in the story. No, no, he was because he, because um the way I read the story, Brett said Ric Flair legitimately got busted open. No, I saw I've seen clips of it. It's obvious he is because he's got his hand and he's well, rubbing that, it against that his ruins, forehead. That completely ruins Brett's story. But no, 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 it doesn't. In the sense that Brett is such a master at doing it that he bladed himself but, no, and I he mean, got it, away it, with it. It ruins the funny part of it. Oh, what was the funny part? Because the funny part was it was Vince thought the real bla- blading, the real blading that Brett actually did was oh, real, okay, okay. and thought that the guy who actually got busted open was the person who bladed. Oh, and he just mentioned uh, Ring of Honor, which so many people want to make it as the next big alternative it's, to it's, WWE. It deserves it, it should be, but it won't be. It won't be. It's better off where it is right now. I know. Although I will say, if you you're kind of deciding between uh, what you want to spend your money on the WWE Network or Ring of Honor, spend it on Ring of Honor, because Kevin Dunn doesn't work at Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. Fucking Bucktooth Beaver fuckface. <laughs> now the other, now the other thing. Uh, tell us what you really think, Cameron. Please. I'm with I'm with uh, I am with uh, Jim Cornette and the late great uh, Paul Bearer, Percy Pringle. Fuck Kevin Dunn. I hate you, Kevin Dunn. You can rot in hell, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Cheeks, because in, here comes the next really important character yeah. of the film, and that's the bodyguard. The bodyguard. Oh no, the bodyguard's a good character, mm-hmm. but and and we mentioned her already. But the thing is, remember we were talking about you know women, you know, people who are fifty years old and look pretty damn good. Marissa Tomei. Mm-hmm. Marissa Tomei's in her fifties. Oh my god, I, she looks better now than she did then. It's. I would agree. That's, and why, I, that's why I love her character in, uh, is it The Bedroom, or what's the movie called? Which the, in the Bedroom, bedroom huh? In The Bedroom, that's yeah. it. She was in The Room. Because that's totally her character, is this older, hot-looking now, milf hooking up with the, you know, the younger kids. Like, now, oh, man. What is I don't, a, I do what, it. Now, <laughs> what is Marissa Tomei's first on-film appearance? I do not know. David, are you Toxic might Avenger, right? Yep. Toxic yeah. Avenger, nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you had to start somewhere, but I, that doesn't mean anything against Toxic no. Avenger. Just saying. Because she just had a bit part as somebody in a uh, women's locker room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As Did somebody she, uh... who sees who sees Toxie and screams. <laughs> but what I just I also love what he's do, what what he's doing here is that he you know trying to make himself look somewhat presentable even though he's got a gash on his forehead, yeah. <laughs> and that you can tell he's he's now entering into her world. You got to impress those yeah. strippers. Yeah. yeah. Did, uh, did she win uh, for My Cousin Vinny, or was she just not? My Cousin, she won for, she my, won cousin for my Cousin Vinny. Vinny. And a lot of people, my cousin Vinny. and of course the gag was everyone thought that Jack Panels was so old and senile that he read the wrong name. And people thought, oh, this is just a fluke. Films like in the bedroom and this have proven, no, it wasn't See, a fluke. She's a damn good oh, actress. Oh, yeah, she's great. 
See, well, see, what gets me is if I was in a strip club and there was a stripper like Marissa Tomei saying, "Hey, I want to give you a lap dance." I'm not gonna make fun of her. I'm gonna go, "Yeah, fuck here, yeah. here." But, but it does. But it here. does. But it does go into the theme. I'm not just gonna make it rain. It's gonna fucking hail. <laughs> but it, but it, yeah, but it does. You mean go you in- bring quarters to the strip club? <laughs> no, just oh, just throw the matters. <laughs> But but it does go into the theme of the the movie though where you do have these two these characters who are deemed too old for what they're doing and mm-hmm. that they're trying to hold on to whatever legacy they've got that one was a great wrestler one was a great stripper and that they're still you can still say that they're still good at what yeah. they do but they've reached a point to where they might just be too old for it or that's the only thing they know and so whenever they try to do something else that's different in this case falling in love with each other, going beyond the fact, just a basic friendship, mm-hmm. they can't do it. They don't really know how to handle it. And it's really sad. Are and I say the, that when she's did showing she get, up. Did she, get, did she really get her nipples pierced? Yeah, I, 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 or are they I, fake? I, I never noticed that her nipples were pierced. Like in near, near did I. <laughs> uh, that I. That I don't know if she did or didn't. Did she go do, go the Rooney Mara Mount and get them pierced? Maybe right. she's that committed. Yeah, but unlike Rooney Mara, I can actually see emotion on her fucking face. And she's good at what she does, yeah. which is acting and stripping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, you know, no, no, just just be just be quiet right now. Just be quiet. Okay, your shirt's on. Never mind. Keep talking. <laughs> but still, it's like he's going over like the the dream of being on top again. And it's like sort of like for her. Well, she's on top. Of- <laughs> but, but, but no, it is. It is true that it actually is a good point. She is his lovely Elizabeth. <laughs> this is where I would have liked Billy Bob Banjo. Is Billy Bob Banjo a real wrestler? Because no, no, I love that. But name. I, I am Billy Bob Banjo. <laughs> okay, you want to know what Billy Bob Banjo would look like? <laughs> You want to know what he would look like? Hillbilly Jim? Yeah, exactly. Imagine Hillbilly Jim. Billy Bob. I just thought of um, Billy Jack Haynes for a second. No, we, um... Billy Bob Banjo. Mr. Magnificent. That's you, Nathan. That was, uh... (laughs) No, was Hillbilly Jim's name outside of uh, WWE Uncle Elmer, or was Uncle Elmer a different guy? I remember in WWF, they did have Uncle Elmer, who was a big, fat guy in overall. He was so fat that in one match, he punched a guy, and they both fell down. I'm not joking. That's how fat Uncle Elmer was. (laughs) His a special move was passing out while he was eating. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The passage of the passion of the sausage. <laughs> yeah. the, the delicious meat stick. <laughs> yes, yeah. But it actually, is one of the other going into that was just like takes it and takes it and takes it, and it's sort of like at the you know spoiling the film right away, but. When he gets to that point where he just, you know, can't take it anymore in his life, that the only thing that is going to be worth living for him is just to go out there and wrestle. That even if it costs him life, if he dies, he dies. But it's one of those where if he dies, he dies. He goes out on top. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to go out on top of her. <laughs> Who won it? Yeah. So Marissa Tomei, she has. We can add her to the hot ass collection. Oh she yeah. Has, she yeah. Has, mm. she, you can add her to the hot yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, there, and there's, the, once again, like the shots that we've seen of people from Falling the back. from behind, Falling. yeah. Yep. And she's stripping the hot 80s music. Come on! <laughs> I wouldn't mind following her from behind. Ah. Yeah. So when we go, when we have your bachelor party, you think you're going to run Find into Marissa Find me Marissa Tomei. Okay. bachelor party. Oh, and the other thing about the, the guy here, he himself was arrested, I do believe, for... <laughs> For selling steroids. Good lord, that guy's huge. Look at him. Yep. Is that Bull Buchanan? No, that's not Bull Buchanan. But that is one of the things that happens in it, is the steroids. In fact, there's this... I remember reading it that Mickey Rourke was so committed to the role that he did take steroids. Did he do it to, to get in shape, or did he do it because he wanted to just to see what it was like, like as an act, a bit like a method acting... Kind I'll, of thing, I'll go with the method. Okay. When in doubt, always go with the method. Always go with the method. Always go with the method. <laughs> and then you just imagine one of the wrestlers going, "Have you tried, tried acting, dear boy?" <laughs> and it's got got everything. No kidding. It's got the hookups. If any, this this was actually what one of my first it, talking about like the big brown bags that that would help Brett. Hart wrote in his autobiography that there was a time in wrestling that people would go and see this doctor 
They go in and they come out with big brown bags of drugs of, of <laughs> looks steroids. Looks like a bag of Skittles, or, you know, yeah. just <laughs> tons of pills. And so you end up looking like that guy, for example. I would like to have seen the casting, uh, you know, memo that went out like yeah. biggest fucking guy possible. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. is what you got. Oh, Cameron, we got another guy. Should we add him to the nice ass collection? What do you think? There we go. Uh, maybe it was nine and a half weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is near sixty year old Mickey Rourke. But, but all credit to Mickey that he did get himself into really great shape to okay. to be in this movie and. And this is true, the stuff that they would have to go to, to that they would go and get the hair bleached, that they would go to I tanning. I, 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 love, I love the contrast of him in the gym with, you know, the buff guys working out very yeah. manly. Cut immediately to him in the uh, the Asian salon mm-hmm. with little colored curlers in his hair and whatnot. That's great. But you know who I don't believe at least ever got his hair done, again, in his prime? Flair? No, Randy Savage. I don't think Randy Savage ever got his hair done because if you look at his hair in the ring... Well, he did... Well, not in his prime, but no, later on he did dye yeah. his hair. But I'm talking about early on. Like, watch him in uh, WrestleMania 3. Yeah. There's no way that that's product. He looks like a muscle-brown Santa before he yeah. passed. <laughs> but, it's not that hard to take off yeah. jeans. But Mickey, it, come on. You know, it's, <laughs> I want to go back to, to Nathan mentioning The Fountain, which I also happen mm-hmm. to really do like. I think, oh, yeah, I think yeah. Darren Aronofsky is one of our best... Directors working today. I like I yeah. with all of his movies. I, I I overall I like them a lot. I always have problems with them, especially with uh, Noah. The last mm-hmm. one he did, it was but, I think was probably my least yeah. favorite of all. But they're the always like interesting. Done, but, but they're but they're always film. interesting. They're and, always original. And there's, so was, there's something but, more to them. And also, you know what I can say about uh, Noah is that that's the kind of you know you know Christian themed biblical movie I can get behind mm-hmm. because it's not a knockoff of something popular. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not like well. Hollywood's done Fifty Shades of Grey. What do we have in response? How about do your own fucking movie? And I, and I love this little moment of them trying out because they're going to, in my opinion, the shit of wrestling, I love that. CCW, trying out all these hardcore little, little weapons See, and tools that, and this such. This is the one area I will agree with uh, Cornette as far as uh, his opinions on Paul Heyman and ECW goes. Mm-hmm. ECW had great wrestlers. It had yeah. Eddie. It had Eddie Guerrero. It had Chris Benoit. It had Rey Mysterio. It had Chris Jericho. Yeah. It had Jerry Lynn, Rob Van Dam. Terry Funk was in ECW. Raven, for all his hardcore stuff, was a good, solid wrestler who could work the mic and had a great mind for booking. Mm-hmm. But it had so much shit with oh. the hardcore bullshit. Oh, and this guy, his name uh, is Necro Butcher. Necro Butcher. <laughs> Necro Butcher. <laughs> Necro Butcher. That's his name. That's great. And one of my favorite bits at the Oscars when Pineapple Express was watching the wrestler, and I just love <laughs> James Franco going Necro Butcher. <laughs> but um, but one of the worst things about ECW, what it brought brought us, was the ability for guys with no talent to. Do uh, get famous because they were willing to hurt themselves. Yeah, this necro no. butcher guy looks like a um, looks like a, film a team rabbi team. who you know, <laughs> moon, moon, moonlights. No, he no, moonlights no. as a wrestler on the Dude, side. Dude, Joe! <laughs> Holy shit, he does look oh like Joe Greer. He does look like oh Joe Greer. shit, Joe! If you're ever listening to this, you're in the rest. Oh shit! <laughs> that's great. I love the dollar. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the thing. That's Joe for you. Yeah. And see, that's the thing. Stuff like this. People want to talk about Japan. Oh being god, savage. I hate about, about Japan oh, having savage Jesus. wrestling. Japan Japan is not as bad as this. I have seen, you know, the King of the Deathmatch tournament that had yeah, Foley those are thumbtacks. With, with Foley and um, uh. and <laughs> Funk, you know, and Foley won. It's not as bad as this shit because it's more on the lines of what you think is bad. They trick you yeah. to think it's mm-hmm. worse. Yeah, but yeah. stuff I, like this, yeah. like, for, and the thing is, I don't even have a problem with thumbtacks because <laughs> the but then, again, but then again, it's because the way Foley talks yeah. talks about thumbtacks. But they make Foley talk about thumbtacks is okay. No matter what, thumbtacks are gonna hurt. Yeah. But it's all about how you take them and how painful they're gonna be. Mm. One thumbtack is gonna honestly hurt a lot more than taking five of them all in the same exact spot. Yeah. Oh God, I just. But yeah, like, I, like, I wince because CCW is I, horrible. I hate CCW. <laughs> and, and I'm tired of the extreme well, wrestling. Nonsense. So, you know, I, I, do, I do like that in the movie they kind of show you the different, yeah, exactly kind of facets of wrestling. We had like you know the, the kind of the very oh, the smaller boom, 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 crowd kind of intimate wrestling before, and now we got the extreme stuff, and they kind of. Yeah. The thing is, I think there should be definitely a line in extreme stuff because you know what? I have no problem with ladder matches, oh, yeah. Hell in a Cell, or yeah, even ext- you know, no, oh, or even you know, just straightforward hardcore matches where you get chairs, you get kendo sticks, 
tables and all that stuff. I have no problem with that as an idea. <laughs> I love that. That's great <laughs> imagery. Uh, I have no, but yeah. what I have a problem with is like stuff like where they use fluorescent lights on each other. Yes. That, that, that's stupid. And the thing is with idiocy, like, um, you know, like anything fucking New Jack did. I don't give a shit. New Jack is one is honestly one of the worst things to ever happen in the wrestling. Yes. Because we actually, and I showed I, a clip of Nathan of New Jack and Fick Grimes falling off the, the whatever <laughs> yeah. it was, and Fick Grimes' big fat ass landing on New Jack's head. And then after that, New Jack was trying to kill Fick Grimes in like a later match. It was just... But I love how this editing is done. Just like, I do like, you know, instead of seeing the match first, that we see yeah. the afterwards, but I like how you're... You, you, see, you, you see the see, injuries, and then you'll yeah, cut back to come, see how they got It's a really good way well, of telling the story. And, you know, none of that, but I have never seen a match like this that was good. Oh, because, because, honestly, you look at it like... Um, it's a geek show. That's all yeah, it is. Yeah, because when you look at, you know, stuff like um, what for years Mick Foley called his favorite match of all time, which mm-hmm. was him and Shawn Michaels yeah. at, um, I, I think the event was called Mind Games. You are correct, yes. And that's a hardcore match. Like, it's like Sean credits it oh, as the match God. that made people believe that the Heartbreak Kid could do shit like that. There's a good makeup in this movie. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's, a great, that's actually a great point. <laughs> and, um, and the thing is, that has some ex- pretty extreme stuff for WWF at the time. Yeah. But the thing is, it does so much more because you're still shocked that, holy shit, did, did Shawn Michaels just go through a table? Did that guy <laughs> just go through a table? And to me, that means more than, oh, great, this guy I don't even know is going to throw oh. himself on a bunch of uh, this thumbtacks. Would, and this would happen in ECW where they would hand out the weapons to people. So, and this is actually based on a true story that yeah. happened to Tommy Dreamer, where you're going to see this. Tommy Dreamer was I thought battling... Was, I thought it was RVD. I, or was, yeah. I think it was either Dreamer or, Rob, or RVD. I thought it was Dreamer, but they're it giving might, them these it, weapons. If it was and, a, no, you're right. And but, there it, it is. Somebody gave him... An a artificial leg. leg. Yeah, I think it was Dreamer. I think it was one of their Dreamer Raven. Bats. Yes, and that actually did happen. That's great. <laughs> just goes to show you, but it just and it also just goes to like this was a guy who was top of the world, right? And this is what he's reduced to using a leg as a weapon against and some guy called the Necro Butcher the is, with guess, a marijuana leaf the, on his shoulder. And the thing is, I guess you can kind of make the point that this could be, you know, Terry Funk and ECW, except I think Funk was treated a lot better by Paul. Yeah. Like, for, from what I can remember, Funk, and plus, Terry Funk was always hardcore. Like, Funk always did crazy shit. I think the other thing is just... God, oh God! I, I hate this. Sh- I hate, I hate this kind of thing. I hate it. But I like how he's how he's and doing it. Yeah. CZ, and that's the thing. CZW is actually worse than um, ECW oh, was at, was when it came to hardcore because ECW did really fucked up things. That I don't think any wrestling company should do like replacing the um, ropes with barbed wire. But also yeah. J- Japan did that as well. But it's nowhere near as bad as the stuff CCW does right now because God. Again, fucking glass. Can I bring up the religious aspect of this? And that, you know, how Mickey Rourke is like a... And he does have, like, the tattoo on his back. Yeah. And I the, think it's and, the Virgin Mary or Jesus. Yeah, and it was, and it was and, just after they were talking about Passion of the Christ. Now he's going yeah. to his own beating. And, then, and there it is. But it's also the fact that one of the things is like how big of a Catholic Mickey Rourke is in, in real life. And I began to think that one of the reasons why he does this, that it is punishment, that he's atoning for his sins of, of, of avarice, of yeah. drug use, of... See, of sex it's, and it, violence. It's of nice. being in, you know, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. Yeah. You know, yeah. you have to atone for that kind of stuff. And, yeah, yeah it's, it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See what? Ah, uh, and that. Oh Harley God. Davidson. And the thing is, when, I, when I see when I see anything like that with a table, and they don't take the the table in the center, I wince because you need to take the table in the center. Yeah. You need to. And does it say job? On yeah. This? But yeah, it goes I, back to I hate religion. this stuff. Right? <laughs> I, hate, I hate this kind of stuff. It makes it makes actual stuff where you do require skill and it's hardcore yeah. look bad. Like ladder matches are hard. Uh, uh, ladder matches are extreme, but you need to have skill to do a ladder match. Mm-hmm. If you were just some nobody in the ladder, like if Shawn Michaels had no talent at all, he if he and Scott Hall yep, were Jesus. nothings, if he and Scott Hall were nothings in their ladder match, it would have been horrible. But those two were amazing performers, and the latter was just another prop they used to make what they were going after even more important. And this just goes back to this goes to, goes back to the beginning of the film, right? Of how he is just alone, getting smaller. Mm-hmm. But then, of course, we know that something is wrong with. with <laughs> Can we talk about how fucking good of an actor he is, and how he got robbed of an Oscar? 
for this movie. Well, the thing is, is that I I would have preferred Mickey Rourke to have won the Oscar. No, but I love, love Sean Penn and, and Milk. See, I, I don't like I don't like the movie Milk. I I think Sean Penn's performance in it is is a little over the top and just very. Like no, I'm an actor. Like no, it's no, just no, like, no. It's, I'd it's argue that's too what much he, for me. I'd argue that's what he was like in Mystic yes. River. Well, the that fact too, that, the yeah. fact that it's kind of like how he is in every yeah. movie. <laughs> it's like I cannot be. I, I cannot be convinced that his performance was better than Bill Murray's in Lost in Translation or what Johnny Depp did mm. in Pirates of the Caribbean. I cannot be convinced. Sean, Sean Penn just keeps robbing Oscars from from all these no. people who deserve it. Oh, he should have no. won for Dead Man Walking, <laughs> in, which leads me to who he beat was Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage. Was the original choice, and he was going to play Randy the Ram, but I think he oh really up, I didn't know that yeah he was but he ended up passing on the film and when Darren Aronofsky was thinking I want Mickey Rourke and he went there and Mickey Rourke talked about this how Darren's like I don't <laughs> I to be blunt I don't want you to fuck up my film that you've been through all this shit and what have you but we, we I want you in this movie no. we're not going to pay you anything but mm. we want you in this film <laughs> yeah. but you are have to watch yourself you have to be on your best behavior right. and i also think it's the, yeah. the the movie and, and the character is more appropriate for mickey rourke just in kind of his life story kind of and reflects and also um, the movie his, itself, his, uh, his real name is revealed robin Br- remzinski or something like that which Re- kind of does which, which, which goes back to what every wrestler does like they, um, they have a fake name like, like you know randy savage his real name was randall poffo yeah see i'm the re- now here's something that happened why would you change that name Poffo. Come on. <laughs> yeah the, however his brother kept the poffo name yeah he was leaping lanny poffo and the genius <laughs> and the genius now th- i have to quickly tell this my father was was somewhat cruel when he did this. He convinced me that I was related to Randy Savage. I don't know how. I, don't, I thought he was like an uncle or something that we never met. But I, and then it turned out I found out that he wasn't a real savage. He was a poffo. I wasn't happy with my dad when I found that. But it was cool on the, on the, the schoolyard because I told everybody I'm related to him. And they're like, yeah, you are. Awesome. And then you were a liar. Mm. How dare you lie to your schoolboy chums? But still, so, just, has, just, this, no, has this happened to any wrestler where they have to stop? You no, know, because because something like this happened after a match. Immediately after a match? Yeah. Oh, pfft. that I do not. Of course, I love the other thing they have here is that they had to tear the, apart his. Aw, I like those. Essentially, that's him. Those it's are like, cool pants. Yeah. I, I like, like the, the pattern of those pants. The, uh, the, I wish I had the, me a pair. The only one that, that I can think of right off the top of my bat where as soon as something like this happened to him, he was done wrestling, mm-hmm. Magnum TA. Oh, yeah, that's a good example. Or I know the, that... The Tom Selleck show? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bret Hart, after his last match with... Um, was it with Sid? Or it was Sid who gave him a powerbomb, then he felt something mushy. No, that was, like, it wasn't Sid who did it. It wasn't Sid, it was Nash? No, Go- uh, no, no. Goldberg yeah. hurt him, but yeah. he still kept wrestling. Yeah. Goldberg was one who hurt him. Yeah. And just what's just really sad about it is like now that what else is there for him to do? He this is all he knows. Is like mm-hmm. for all intents and purposes, he probably never. He might not have never graduated high school. Most well, certainly didn't get a college education. See, and. and he was this? too busy kicking ass in the ring. Yeah, but that's what's what's really what's really sad about it. And I remember Mick Foley talking about this, saying to everybody who wants to go into wrestling, for the love of God, please get a college education. Do that. Get a degree because if you don't, because you're not always going to be wrestling. Well, what if something happens? You kind of have you? to do that with every career. Right? Yeah, you well, got to. You got to have I mean, that. I mean, that look at, I mean, look True. at the cur- Just look in at case. the the funny thing is. Um, uh, Foley's backup career and has ended up being you know writing and speaking, mm-hmm. and. Even those things are kind of short term, but that's the thing about Foley. Like he's just so magnetic. Mm-hmm. Nobody can hate Mick Foley. Not hell. Ric Flair for years thought he hated Mick Foley. Then they talked to. Then he talked to each other in an airplane. And afterwards, everything was cool. You know, one of the things I do like that they do throughout the film is the idea of stage names as such. That he mm-hmm. has a stage name. That Mr. Tomei has a stage name in the film, and that they're so used to having these stage names that if anybody calls them by their real name, it's like, no, that's not me. This is me. And that you you know, realize you begin to lose yourself in the character that you've essentially created, that well, you are the wrestler or you are the stripper. When, when, people, don't, who you when are. people don't call me Flint Ironstag, I get very confused. It takes me a second to, well, and then also to realize goes, they're so It also kind of shows the danger of <laughs> because if you live your gimmick, you can fuck yourself up. Look at Ric Flair. 
And it, it's that's very, that's a very good example. Ric Flair lives it lived his uh, jet his you know wheeling dealing you know jet flying lifestyle, and he you know, financially he's paid for it. Yep. And it's just and also sad because you know most wrestlers they do refer to each other by their you know their stage names, not by their real names for the most part. And it isn't that it's anything you know negative or wrong. It's just yeah. something that they're used to. But then. There is this loss of identity or who you are as a person is now going away. In this well, case, who was, who is really, you know, Robin? Is Was there ever a Robin? In this <laughs> case, it's just... And I mean, and that also does go into some of the things that, you know, Darren Aronofsky yeah. does in, in fact, his films, like with Black Swan subsequently following this. Like, who am I as a well, in, as a person? I know that, but they're, they're, they're you know, you know, Robin can be multiple people. You know, like Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake. They're all Robin. Yeah. I'm not well, even talking about the movie anymore. I know. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for you to slowly realize. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> I, love, I love you take away the towel and you've got the, yeah. the porno bag. But another thing I, I wanted to get to when it came to Aronofsky was mentioning, like, the fountain and all. Like, his films before that, like, Pie, Requiem, and uh, Requiem for a Dream, and The Fountain, they were films that were very meticulous in terms of how they were how they were shot. In this case, the film does have a very maison scène look to it, handheld. Yeah, it's very part different of the from crew. all the other models yeah. of the movies before that. And he has kind of a, a kind of a similar story with the kind of a, I don't know if I call it a redemption story, but, you know, he had the fountain, and it, yeah. like I said, it didn't really bomb, but it didn't do well, didn't get good reviews and stuff like that, and lost some money. Yeah. And then, you know, so he does this next film, very low budget, whatever, and he kind of... He has kind of a comeback as well, in a way. Okay. So now, did now, now, okay, this game. Did they do yeah. that? Did they have someone specially make that uh, for the movie, the Randy the Ram Nintendo oh. thing? Oh, no, this is there? a real game. This no, no, but real... I mean, like, did they, were they able to specially make the Randy yeah. the Ram yes. and the no. Ayatollah and stuff? This is an actual game made yes. for the movie. Yeah, That's and awesome. this was actually based off of WrestleMania for Nintendo Entertainment yeah, System, which, which is a I horrible own, game. Which I own, and I love that game <laughs> because of how bad it is. Okay, guys, okay, guys, here's the, here's the big question. Uh-huh. Best wrestling game. Go. No Mercy? It's between, it's between both the N64 and WWF games. See, I, w- I would agree completely. The WrestleMania 2000 uh-huh. or No Mercy. I would put No Mercy just a little bit higher than, yeah. than WrestleMania 2000. I love Day of Reckoning. Those games are I love, fucking brilliant. I love Day of Reckoning too, which is... I, I really do like the game. It's now, great an roster. Honorable, for... An honorable mention goes to um, the Fire Pro Wrestling series. Oh, yeah. And I have to admit, I do have one of the SmackDown versus Raw games, and the reason why I like it is because I get to play as the Bushwhackers. <laughs> what's a, what's a really good like recent uh, wrestling game? Because I th- I think the the most recent one I have is like SmackDown Shut Your Mouth okay. from like two thousand. Well, I think I actually have that over there. Or yeah, here comes the pain. Yeah, the most the too. most recent one I I owned was WWE Two K Fourteen because you could play as um. Randy Savage in it, mm-hmm. and that, also, but not only that, but like the entire NWO. Well, the, the entire yeah. important member oh, of the geez. NWO. Yeah. So you got um, Hall and Nash, and then Hall and Nash in their um, outsiders mm-hmm. gear. You got normal Hulk Hogan and Hollywood Hulk Hogan, <laughs> Randy Savage in four different outfits, and including the NWO yeah. outfit because that makes it five. Is that a good game over? Because I haven't played any recent wrestling games at they're, all. But I really want. But I really want to buy a, a they're, newer. They're fun, a newer and I do game. want. And I, do, and I, so I would get suggesting two K fourteen. Two K fourteen. Okay. Because I would not get two K fifteen because I would because it's stripped down and you should really get it for um, PlayStation four. Hmm. Okay. And the reason I want that is so I can play a Sting. <laughs> but yeah, I, like I haven't played any of the SmackDown versus Raw games or any of those other recent ones, so I don't know. I haven't played a wrestling game in so long, but they're so much fucking fun. I remember Roger Ebert's review of The Wrestler, in particular his bit on Marissa Tomei, where he... And talk- how fucking hot she is. Well, yeah. what, what he talked about was just how <laughs> how kind of a person it is. Like, even if she's being... She, you know, later on in the film, she does something that's very cruel to Randy to protect herself, but it's one of those where underneath it you know what a good person she really is underneath that. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's very hard to do that, to really come off naturally at times. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you have to... I am an actor. I am performing something. I'm playing somebody who I'm not. Mm-hmm. But how do I be somebody who I'm not but pull it off effort, effortlessly? And I'm asking Nathan this, especially because you yourself are an actor. Mm-hmm. So and how Nathan, do you Nathan pull that actually, off? Nathan is actually up for this part. Yes, it's true. 
We're not talking. We're not talking uh, Mickey Rourke. We're talking Marissa Tomei. Mm-hmm. So I, I was a little too busy looking at her nipples, probably yeah, yeah. their address there. But, what were you saying? Well, I was asking, like, how, <laughs> as you as an actor, what do you do to prepare yourself to portray a character to come off naturally, even if it might be something oh. that you're not, that you are not. I can answer for Nathan because I know what you did every day on set to get prepared. <laughs> what? Well, oh. I uh, I practice my lines very well. <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta, did, gotta go over those lines. Yeah, you did a lot, a lot. of lines. I did, I did my did, lines. You did a lot quite of Quite a few lines. times yeah. uh, backstage. Um, I, I think I, I think you'd hear this from a lot of actors. It's a little cliche, but you have to find something in the character that you can relate to personally. What did you find? And just, and just kind of build off that. And I think, and I think Mickey Rourke had a lot to draw off of yeah. in his personal life to. To relate to this character, how many comebacks does Mickey Rourke have? Much better. How much what? How many, how many comebacks? comebacks does he have? Comebacks. You guys remember when Sin City came out? Oh, Mickey Rourke's comeback. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. why I was saying. Why is why is it three years later? No, this is the comeback. Yeah. I was like, I thought he already did come back. Because he got an Oscar nomination this time around, probably. True. And there's no there's no <laughs> way they're gonna nominate him for the Sin City, even though he kind of deserved it. Oh, he's great in Sin City. But I do like how they they bring that up. It's, it it does. Because the other thing that's also very awkward when it comes to dialogue and such, and that is you have to do it to where there is exposition. In this case, you have to reveal that, okay, he has a daughter, he does have a family. And how do you do that without coming off fake like a Dan Brown novel? That you have to find a way to make it feel natural. And, of course, I think you can write the best dialogue in the world, but if you don't cast the right actors, it's going to fail. And what oh, works yeah. about this sure. film is just how effortlessly they both pull it off. That I don't so, see Mickey Rourke, I don't see Marissa Tomei, I see the characters that they're well, portraying. I, how many uh, roles do you can you th- name of that happens? Because let's see, right off the top of my head, I can th- say Hannibal Lecter, um, Heath Ledger is the Joker, um, and this is a huge compliment f- for me. Jimmy Fox is Django. Well, you don't um, see them. Yeah, you don't see the actor. You mm-hmm. see the character. I think Christoph Waltz is the same way in Django. And Samuel Jackson oh. definitely in Django. A- a- I- I'd say Avatar. <laughs> well, you don't because see them. <laughs> it's uh, you know, it's because they're all computerized no, no. and and then they're in a shitty movie. <laughs> okay, actually, you know who I would, even though it, it, this unobtainium, might... Cameron. Um, I would actually. If s- that doesn't draw you in to a film, I don't know. What Is it will. cheating to say Gollum? Andy Serkis is no, Gollum. No, it's not. It's not because. When that's see, completely because, different, yeah. Well, because when you see him in his motion capture suit, mm-hmm. even the look on his face, like, when yeah. you see Andy uh, Circus normally, it's nothing like... It, but when, even when he gets into character... Yeah, you watch those behind the scenes where he's mm-hmm. getting into character, it's, it's very different. Oh. Yeah. Even when, Daniel um, Day-Lewis in almost anything he does. Even when you uh, look at um, Mark Hamill, he's laying down the tracks for the Joker... Oh, yeah. His, he changes. His face distorts when he does it. And he becomes the Joker. And this is the introduction of his daughter, played by the lovely, Evan H- lovely H- Evan Rachel Weisz. Evan Rachel Weisz. Is, is she is she still married to um, Marilyn Manson? No, they. I don't think they ever worked. Did they ever get married? I don't no. think they did. Did no. they get married? Or were they no, just, no, no, no. They, they so, dated. Well, Nathan, what do you identify with in Bob the Clown? Yeah. Oh, oh, so much the um, the uh, the sex addiction, the the drug addiction, and the fame addiction. I I relate to. The trifecta, really. Now, what do you relate to in Flint Iron Stack? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost nothing. <laughs> the, uh, the constantly hitting on anything uh, that moves. And being best friends with Michael Brown. That's, yeah. that, that's an easy one to drop on. <laughs> he better take you to the strip. We're forcing him to take you to the strip. <laughs> we need to tell him that we need to, yeah. get, we all need to get together and tell him that he needs, that he needs to immediately make sure that you get so drunk that you can excuse yourself from anything you do. Yeah. <laughs> But just, Isn't that what any bachelor party is yeah. supposed to happen? <laughs> and then, and like I said, we're going back to Jake Roberts and his and his daughter. I mean, I definitely do. I definitely do say, or just like any of them, because I remember, just in particular, I also remember Roddy Piper talking about how one day when he just stopped wrestling, he went home, and he was just. And bear in mind, this is a man who loves his wife and loves his kids, adores them. You're such but, an asshole for getting a yeah, heart attack, Dad. But. But it just it doesn't feel right at times where you've been yeah. on the road for so long you don't know what exactly to do. So in this case, these guys have been on the road so long that all they know is wrestling, drugs, highways, uh, sex with other partners. They don't know their kids. For them, if this young kid shows up to wrestle them, that's their children. So in this case, it's especially knowing what I know about Jake Roberts' kids and you know his daughter, what she had to go through. 
It, it's, it is really quite sad. It does what get to that Flair's point. family? Oh, my God. That's a good example, especially Flair, how he partied a lot, all mm -hmm. the marriages he had. It's... I, I don't doubt for a second he didn't love his kids because I know how heartbroken he was when his his son tragically mm -hmm. passed away. But it, it's the same Reed, thing, right? Not David Flair. It was Reed. Yeah, Reed. I think died of a drug overdose, if I yeah, recall correctly. Oh, jeez. That's the one thing I do want to get across when it comes to wrestling. And that is, I have to admit, I pretty much stopped watching wrestling. It's become really sad for me to watch it. You know, I'm still getting nostalgic over the older stuff, but it's. Mm -hmm. Just hearing all the stories about how the the wrestlers have no health insurance, or how the fact is sort of like, oh, they have to go out. Like, you know, we're big sports fans, right, Nathan? Mm -hmm. And you know how an injury that put a football player out for the rest of the season, these wrestlers have to get up and wrestle the they next day. They have to keep day. going through. They have yeah. to keep going, and it gets worse and worse, and they become addicted <laughs> to drugs and painkillers and alcohol and such. <laughs> and then you see how their life slowly deteriorates until finally they die at the age of like. 40, or some case, some of them die before they turn 30. See, I, I can still watch wrestling, I just can't watch um, WWF's main stuff. I, I can't, especially the story that came about CM Punk and the, the well, doctor who see, didn't it, it's, treat it's, him. And it's not even just all that, it's it's all the problems that you know guys like Jim Cornette highlight. And specifically the one name, mm -hmm. Kevin Dunn. Yeah. I mean, just this, also, and, you know, I, I, li I like this scene of them, uh, you know, kind of selling themselves, kind of like the way, like a comic con, uh, like yeah, like a comic con actors yeah. do if they're, you know, they, they bring their headshots, they'll you but, know sign, but, but in ways, sign things for money and stuff like that. And they'll, it's they'll, they'll sadder make money though, that way. in a way. Well, it's sad in this thing because most wrestlers do it at actual convention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This just seems unreasonably sad. Like I've yeah. never heard of anything like this. Yeah. Okay, so do you guys watch uh, Total Divas? No, no. <laughs> Wait, like, does, does Hannah wa make you watch ha that? Ha Hannah does watch a lot of reality TV. I, <laughs> I've caught a few episodes of Total Divas. No, I, I, can't, uh, I, I will admit it's it's a little addicting. See, well, it's, see, it's a little see, addicting. See, that's one of the reasons <laughs> I that's one of the reasons I can't watch the main WWF product because God. you can't give the women who know how to wrestle like mm -hmm. there are two women and no there's there's more than two there's like oh, the there's a, there's AJ Lee there's Paige who I can't wait to see in a couple weeks and there's um there's a uh, Natty Knight Neidhart, uh, daughter of uh, of Jim God. the Anvil Neidhart. I just want to point out just what a good shot that was. Just slowly showing yeah, who they were. The, yeah. Like artificial the, leg of one guy stuck in a chair, one guy uses a cane. Yeah, and just look looking, kinda, this is his future. Because his, his injuries are all, you know, you can't. Internal. Yeah, that, yeah. that pacemaker and, and stuff, you can't see him. But everyone but, uh, else, he's in a wheelchair, he's got the little, the little pee bag. But, uh, it's... Yeah, but, it's heartbreaking. But, but like stuff like Total Divas, that, that just inf infuriates me because you have somebody like Paige, a young young up and comer, who is m more of a skilled wrestler than ninety percent of the women on the main ros roster. She puts the rest of them to shame with what she can do in the ring. Natty Neidhart, who has every bit of her father and her um, uncle Brett's skill in the ring, and they're all fucking demoted to reality show nonsense. Then when you watch something like um, what WWF mm -hmm. does, which is their um, uh, developmental territory called NXT. Everyone fucking wrestles. There's no sports mm -hmm. entertainment bullshit. It's wrestling. Mm -hmm. So I can watch NXT with no problem because Kevin Dunn has nothing to fucking do with it. <laughs> That's why I can't wait for Vince to retire so Triple H <laughs> and Stephanie can take over and fire that buck tooth fuck. Do you, do you think he's ever going to retire? I think v he's 69. I thought he was I mean, already I mean, 70. He's going to be 70 this year, I think. He needs to. Now, Vince had great ideas once, but the thing is, I and this isn't going to be a slam against Stephanie. Once Shane left, because she, because I'm something about, in, and this is all pure speculation on my behalf, but something tells me that you know in that era, on one shoulder you had dumb shit Kevin Dunn mm -hmm. whispering in, "Hey Vince, you should do this." You should do this. And then Shane goes, um, Dad, you know that's fucking stupid, right? Hmm. Just checking, Dad. You know that's stupid? You know that's stupid? Okay, just checking, because that's fucking dumb what he said. <laughs> and with Shane gone... I find it funny. She's like, tell me to get clothes and that. She don't have any clothes on. How about that? <laughs> well, Shane gone. With Shane gone, Vince only has a buck to fuck to listen to. Yeah. And that's the thing. Nobody likes Kevin Dunn. I have not heard a positive story about Kevin Dunn. I've heard nothing but horrible nightmare stories about him. And when you see a picture of him, Nathan, he does look like a bucktooth beaver. 
I love that story that uh, Cornette told about um, how he nearly beat the shit. Yeah, and Jim Ross. Life. Everybody thought he was joking. And Jim yeah. Ross was like, no, yeah, he's not joking. Yeah, he says, I should beat the fuck out of you, you little shit. And everyone else is laughing except for Jim Ross because Jim Ross knew he would do it. Now, I also want to point out when it came to this about this whole thing, it's like, once again, she's putting on her, trying to put on a show when it comes mm-hmm. to money and such, and it's like... And nobody wants really to dance, even though she's her. smoking fucking hot. Yeah, it's... Because they want somebody <laughs> young. Well, that's the thing. There's There are young actresses out now, and we're, let's just throw Skull out the window, because like, we can we all agree that Marissa Tomei can act the shit out of pretty much anything you throw at her? Oh, yeah. So let's get that out of the way and just say this. Marissa Tomei is a fucking awesome actress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's gotten better on, as she gets older, huh? absolutely. And, uh, and also, and, like but a also, fine wine. Yeah, and also, <laughs> let's just say, on pure looks, there are... Very few actresses that are young yeah. right now can compete with her. If we're going on pure looks, Marissa Tomei is just oh. fucking hot. <laughs> and we've and all we've talented. all done this. I actually walked in on one of our professors doing this. <laughs> Which one? Nah, I'm just joking. Because <laughs> I was going to say Keenan technically wasn't a professor. <laughs> oh, are you done in there? <laughs> is that, need, need me to bring you a box of Kleenex, boss? <laughs> Need some extra lube there, buddy. <laughs> no, that's when your mom does that. <laughs> no, no, that's what Keenan does. Oh. <laughs> but no, it's, it's it's also interesting getting hearing about other wrestlers in there. And what happens after they stop wrestling? Like, the big joke I remember is the wrestler known as Just Incredible working at Target. He got so much shit when everyone found out he worked at Target. But he had to do something. I know. You gotta it, pay the bills. Yeah, and once again, it goes into the whole thing is for the love of God, get a, get a college education, yeah. guys. And, he, and you know what? Who knows? If, and I'm, I'm, this sounds like I'm making fun of him or not. If he does good at Target and he really works hard, he can actually get good money as like in managerial position. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's move, not, that's move up not, the ranks yeah. and all that, yeah. And also, let's be 100% clear on this. As successful as he was as Just Incredible in ECW, that never translated to WWE. Oh, I have to point this out, what I absolutely love in the costume design of these two characters. Now, bear in mind like how we're used to seeing their skin, right? And how open, the, how supposedly open they are when they're their characters. But now when but they're, now they're in the real, public, they're, they're hiding themselves. Yeah. In this case, oh, wait, she, doesn't have, wait, she, doesn't she, have, she doesn't have any makeup on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't his hair like more golden before? Yeah. He's not and now he's on. got flare bleach. Yeah. So it's one of those where it's like you just seen that they're just trying to, trying to hide. Like, this isn't, like, they don't really know how to be themselves. And she goes from scorching co- scorching hot to deceptively cute. And s- come on. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's like what, what Eber wrote in his review. It's like, it's, you definitely do get that sense of this kind person is there. And that there are both people who are both, as characters, they are trying to be the best at who and they are. And of course, are. Uh, for his uh, daughter, he picks out his color. Yeah. Because the thing is about him is, I mean, he's trying his best, but that's also one he, of the... He never knew how to be a father. Yeah, that's one of the tragic bits Which, about it. I kind of wonder if that's kind of the same situation with Ric Flair. Or just or just anyone that's in a, general. Because that's the thing. I, th- I think even with as much time as Roddy Piper has spent away from home, I think Roddy is, Piper... Is that the guy from Blue's Clues in the background? He's got the same shirt. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I just noticed that and had to because, bring Because uh, if you ever listen to any <laughs> podcast that you know, Roddy Piper has done with his son, he and his son are really close. Yeah. Because the thing is, she does It's seven in the morning. What are you talking about, a beer? (laughs) Hey, it's seven at night somewhere. (laughs) But it's still, it is one of those where she doesn't know how to relate to somebody outside of the strip Mm. club. In this case, it's also his attempt. How can he get to know somebody outside of of the ring? And it's really, really well done. It's like none of those. I've seen other See, films that they try to do you, something you, like that and they force yeah, and that, it down and your that throat. Up, that brings up an interesting thing about re- wrestling is um, how many wrestlers do you know that have somebody in their lives like, you know, a husband and wife Jesus. outside of wrestling and that marriage lasts? Meanwhile, how many um, wrestlers do you know that have a significant other who are also wrestlers and that continues to work? Tell them not to 
Because I know a uh, million dollar man Ted DiBiase's uh, mom and dad were both wrestlers. That's yes, true. Yeah. And um, I'm pretty sure, and you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say she's a wrestler, but she's definitely in the business and on stage, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Yeah. And even, you know, Shawn Michaels, his wife is a former Nitro girl. Everybody's former wife is a former <laughs> Nitro girl. No, but, um, yeah, but Shawn Michaels' cur- current wife is a former Nitro girl. For now. Maybe they'll get divorced. No, she no, she was the one who kind of yeah. got on board again. Mm-hmm. For him to wrestle, huh? For him to wrestle? No, like born again Christian. Ah. she was born again, and that was what kind of got him into it. Because that's another thing I do want to. Because we were mentioning the religious aspects of it, and that is true that there have been some wrestlers who have become born again Christians. And you mentioned Shawn Michaels, but Ted DiBiase, Ted DiBiase, example, DiBiase is born also again Christian. I, mean, I don't know if any of them necessarily needed that kind of turnaround like Shawn did. Because say what you want about Sean and all that stuff, but being born again actually did make him a better yeah. person. And I also love this scene too, where it's like we're going back to what the eighties, and that uh, essentially that you can also their get heyday, this, yeah. essentially yeah, you got it that that was their heyday of being a stripper, or those were the good old days, mm-hmm. the eighties. Well, well, not only that, but you know, this is actually good music. Fuck both of you guys. <laughs> well, we didn't complain about the music. See, now it should be a musical. <laughs> yeah. I d- <laughs> you want to see the Broadway version of The Wrestler? Yeah, <laughs> I'd go see it. <laughs> and Randy the Ram's uh, theme song is actually uh, bash, uh, Bang Your Head, Metal Health. Metal Health is the name of the song oh. by Quiet Riot. Uh-oh. <laughs> Don't blame Kurt Cobain. <laughs> What's wrong with the 90s? Yeah. Oh, Batman shit. and Robin, Wild Wild West? Come you on. You just named. 90s. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. I mean, I understand her side. When you're a stripper, I mean, you yeah. can't really... Oh, God. Just... But it's clear that she wants to have a, a relationship with and someone yeah. and she and has only, a connection and only with that, but he's... when it's, when it's a, you know, a strip club regular, eh, and she, kinda, okay. and she, ju- and she just chugs a beer. She just increases yeah. her yeah. hotness. But no, but I mean, <laughs> for me, it's like just how sad it is. It's like this, she doesn't know how to interact. I mean, it is really, it and is really and sad. And it's not only that, but it's not like, you know, he's... Yeah. That much of a piece of shit. Oh, oh well, no, no, he's, he's never been a piece well, of no, shit no, no, to her. No, 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 no. It's not yeah. that he's a piece of shit. It is. It's just one of those where. Well, she to well to her, she's never been that. Yeah, it's like it's not that she thinks that he's a piece of shit. It's just that if you're in a position to where you don't know how to interact with people outside of your of your job, if you can't separate, you know, this he can't separate being the wrestler. She can't separate being the stripper. It does. It's really hard to get that, especially when you're. In the you know line of work, essentially, like what you're getting at is it doesn't necessarily have to be wrestling or stripping. Mm-hmm. That yeah. if you become so immersed in creating this character, essentially like Nathan the actor, or uh, Cameron the writer, or something like that, if that's who you become and you lose yourself. Even Dougie was paid. And now I love this this bit of the the sound, where I remember I. You hear, I think that you can't hear a little bit of, like, the no. crowd, like, cheering, no. like, a little no. bit. When we talk about wrestlers and their characters, a lot of that has to do with the fact that it, what everyone says, everyone says in order to be a really successful wrestler with your character, you have to find mm-hmm. that character. It has to be mm-hmm. part of you in, in real life. And, you know, when, uh, that's what, you know, The Rock mm-hmm. says, the, you, know, the, you know, The Rock has said, the rock, that um, the character of The Rock was yep, exact, right now. W- mm-hmm. was exactly what he was feeling with the way that people were treating him. The do, re- you, do you think The Rock is a good wrestler? I think it doesn't matter what you think! Oh, Jesus. You- I'm sorry, I was saving that. <laughs> and there's a crowd, and there's, there's the crowd cheering, like, here he is, he's going out to perform, he's going mm-hmm. to perform. Yeah. Heart they'll board! <laughs> oh, I can't do any wrestler impersonations. <laughs> I thought you did a good, pretty good Lex Luger. <laughs> oh, that wasn't Lex Luger. That was me doing a bad Rudy Giuliani impersonation. I thought you did a perfect. <laughs> you want to, you, you heard my Rudy Giuliani? I have not. This is my Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> September 11th, 2000. No, that's Lex Luger. Very tragic. 
That's no, that's your, that's Lex Luger. You just soaked the mic right yeah, now. Yeah, it was that was terrible, ladies and gentlemen. I admit it was terrible. <laughs> hey Nathan, I didn't know your grandma was in this. <laughs> It does kind of look like my grandma, actually. Oh, actually, give actually, her give her darkish gray hair. And it'd be I actually, full on image. thought that was Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very method. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm, she's the best smoked hand. Oh, sorry, what were you saying, lady? <laughs> I just like it. It's like. Now he's like, Cuz, come on, we've all worked, you know, essentially mm. real, real you know, when it comes to just working in, you know, in business. Anything. and yeah. having, <laughs> Well, you do have to bullshit, right? And you have to be like, oh, what do you think of this? It was good. It was tasted good, I guess. That's why at my restaurant job, whenever something new was put on the menu, they always took out like five plates and let everyone at the restaurant eat it. Really? So, they, so if anybody ever asked them, they'd be like, oh, well, I like this. Hmm. Or the best part is when I used to work at a bookstore, it's kind of hard to say, oh, this book is great, and try to up, you know, try to sell the book. You're like, you yeah, should buy you better, this. You better know, you know, at least something about whatever business you're in so yeah. you can And you know, this is also showing it, you know. how, you know, he can pretty much do anything as long as he gets some kind of, ad, you know, adoration from people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because then he starts getting into it, and he's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's kind of, he's kind of doing his, his acting bit, and, you know. Yeah. Being charismatic and playing yeah. with the crowd. Yeah, ex- exactly. It's him putting on a show for him. <laughs> oh, Mickey. <laughs> I don't know. Thighs are all right. <laughs> this is oh, one of my geez. favorite. Ah. This is one of my favorite scenes in the movies. I love when he's, you know, he's, he's, he's working a deli counter and he's yeah. he's having so much fun and he's yeah, being charismatic. He, it's great he, because he gets to have either one on one interaction with people. But it's not only that the interaction with one on one people, but he's thinking, okay, I have the potential of getting with, you know, Cassidy. That he has the potential of with his daughter. That there's like a future. <laughs> this guy's reaction yeah. is just like, what? Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a, that is for some reason I, I think if Randy Savage ever worked that would be a normal Canada, job that, that would be him <laughs> come on get, catch the XL yeah <laughs> gotta catch that XL <laughs> yeah but isn't it's one of those where it does work as we as the audience do we do like him that we root for him that we don't want him to keep making terrible mistakes or want him to do the right thing it's just that. It's it's so funny though that we try is to grow up as people, but as we find out that well, to quote Magnolia, we may be through with the past, but the past ain't through with us, and our demons do take over. And so you argue like, do we really mature as people, or will we always go back to our you know our vices? I always love when they have uh, him in his glasses and oh, yeah. put the earpiece in. Reminds me of my oh, dad, <laughs> except for the earpiece <laughs> and the long hair. My dad has no hair. That's a little. <laughs> Sorry, Dad, speaking if you're watching, to, listening of, to this. Speaking of no hair, do you guys see the picture of Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor? Yeah. Hmm. Have you seen... He looks the, exactly the way I thought he would look as Jesse Eisenberg with no hair. See, that's the thing. Was, people kind of, But that's the thing. I was kind of shocked you as well because uh, everyone was dodging the question about, is Luthor going to be bald and no one would answer it? And there she is where she's... The camera's following her. Like, she's putting on a show, do you think, as well? I, I actually do think that it's one of the things that we do as people, we do try to put on a show. I think for the most part that we do want to try to get other people to like us. Oops. Well, not right? Cameron. He doesn't well, give a shit. I don't care. <laughs> I really well, not even a little bit. Not even I, a little not bit that people... Not even <laughs> I've, I've long passed yeah. that. I mean, I do admit I, that I want people to like me. And I sometimes, you know... Mainly yeah, because I find most people annoying. <laughs> like me. <laughs> But I think that's what I really like with, with Randy is that he does want people to, to like him for who he is. And as he goes on his journey, it then goes into this maybe somewhat bit of a dis, of despair for him. Of who do they like? Do people no. really like him or do they like Randy the Ram? Yeah. Nathan, that kind of reminds me of your van, except it's uh, not white and it doesn't say free candy on it. <laughs> Have you seen the um, on Conan when he does the um, when he goes on Tinder and Grinder and he has the the creepy van that yeah. they drive around in? Oh, it's great! Oh God! And it's got like the couch and the table in the back. 
Now, speaking of Evan, we were mentioning about Evan Rachel Wood being married. She was married to Jamie Bell, and they had a kid. But oh, now okay. they're I didn't know that. now they're separated. The thing, She's yeah, married to the thing. Uh oh, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say Tintin. Tintin too. Uh, I don't know why you're calling him the, the thing because he's not gonna be in a Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> or, or I remember him as Jimmy in King Kong. Remember the Jimmy? Oh yeah, little yeah. Jimmy, or or Billy Elliot. So who? Billy I'm Elliot. Just no, just all. <laughs> Jimmy. Go, Jimmy! Stay back, Jimmy! No, Jimmy! No! Where was this uh, film? Do you know? New Jersey and so parts Jersey? of Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, basically the Mid-Atlantic area, which, as Cameron pointed out with um, ECW, ECW was based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the Mid-Atlantic With the ECW wrestling. arena, as yep. they would call it. And, and also when it comes to, mentioning when it comes to wrestling territories, that also in the Mid-Atlantic, specifically New York, was WWF. That's where they were yeah. based out of. And even back then, they were known as the places where the where big guys reign supreme. Yep. And of course, because that was... I think there was a bar like that by the airport. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I live near a bar yes. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, big boys. Does Ken go there? I don't think, no, it's now not, it's this not, was the Oscar clip. I remember. This is the Oscar. Everybody, yeah. this is what an Oscar. Still, I still see, think that's that's This is up. what an Oscar clip is supposed to be, where you yeah. actually show off the talent of the people mm-hmm. nominated. Mm-hmm. Unlike what um, what was her name? Uh, Felicity Jones. Felicity Jones got for her clip from uh, Theory, Theory of Everything. Everything yeah. Where it was essentially, I love my husband. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I love him so much. Yeah. Boy, I love my husband. <laughs> But just, nothing gets her as an actress, but that was the worst possible clip you could yeah, pick. Some, sometimes, sometimes they pick really you not the best ones. clips. So. And uh, now we have nominated um, David Savage for the for best actor in the true story of Billy Mitchell. Here is the clip. <laughs> and that, that would be your Oscar clip. <laughs> yes, when I'm, when I'm dead and buried, people are going to remember me for game boob and farts. <laughs> and tucking your dick between your legs and dancing is yes. game boob. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I have kids, they're going to be like, my dad was the game boob. Well, except for the uh, motion pitching, which we have gotten Mickey Rourke yeah. to play the game boob. Yeah. <laughs> now, was this before or after Mickey Rourke was in the abysmal Iron Man 2? This is before. This is before. Okay. Yeah. So this is what this led to the Iron that's Man That's how it works. You get the Oscar nomination or the win, and then you do the superhero franchise. Yeah. That's now. What that is. The one thing I'll point out when it comes to how how natural Mickey was, um, there, Mickey told the story on Inside the Actor Studio when he went to go audition for to join to become an actor at the Actor Studio, he was one of the few actors who went in first audition, and he got into the Actor Studio. There are many other actors who took multiple times to get in. Some actors who never got into the Actor Studio, he did it first shot. It was like just how talented the guy was. He he really was a natural. I mean, those who, who maybe only know Mickey Rourke through this movie or through Iron Man 2, when you see him in stuff like... I hope nobody knows him just from Iron oh. Man 2. <laughs> well, they might, but, oh. but I mean, even if... I mean, oh. I where mean, is my bed? I mean, Where is my bed? Half an hour. Where is my bed? Like, even, oh God. even worse would be... This fucking but, movie. Worse, even worse would be if somebody only knew Sam Rockwell from that movie. Uh, <laughs> fuck. But this is a good moment. This Sorry, Keenan. He was fucking horrible in that movie. This is a nice, lovely little moment. I, I like they're using the the locations too as yeah. a reflection of oh, oh, these great buildings that used to be beautiful and man, now they're just run down yeah. pieces of shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if I was any special meaning. <laughs> well, that's you may not have noticed it, but, but your brain, brain did. <laughs> <laughs> but it it is true. That's like that's when when one guy asked me like how do you separate you know the great directors from the rest and you go well something like this for example that this is when you get a guy who's given this source material let's say Darren Aronofsky knows nothing about wrestling but he gets it and then he finds like this connection in this case about this old broken piece of meat and you can see reflected in terms of the production design, mm-hmm. in terms of the costume and the makeup and, and the performances I mean that's how you can separate them I remember uh, the first time I went to Sundance, uh, there was a movie called Big Fan with Patton Oswalt. Oh, yes. It's written and directed by the guy who wrote 
this movie, yes. and this movie had just come out, mm-hmm. and all. Or no, no, it had it had been out for a little bit. The Oscar nominations had just come out. Yeah. And the day before, I went to a screening of Big Fan at Sundance, so he was there. And, of course, the Q&A, everyone wanted to talk about The Wrestler <laughs> and not about uh, Big, Fan. Big Fan, which is a really, really good movie if you guys haven't seen it. Oh, I really it, like it Big is. Fan. But, but, uh, but I, the... I, I just remember going to the screening of Big Fan and everyone like, oh, is, is it The Wrestler? Did you see The Wrestler? It's so good and blah, blah, blah. It's like, and then like he... yes, it is good. Let's talk about this movie. And then he did get nominated right for Best Original Screenplay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he didn't. Although I think maybe I don't know why it wasn't because I know the screenwriter maybe get a little you know prickly when it comes to this sort of thing. But I think that a lot of moments in the film were improvised, you know, like dialogue and such. I wouldn't be surprised. A lot of it feels very natural. Yeah. I was watching um, uh, Alien the other day, and that's a movie where it's it's I I'm, I know most of those lines are written. But it all feels completely improvised. People are talking over each other, and just the this feels very, very natural. Just like Marissa Tomei is very natural. Oh, that is so natural. Now, when we stop went, talking. <laughs> now, when we went to Spearmint Rhino, do you think there were anybody there who was in their forties? Not that I noticed, but it was it was very dark. <laughs> yeah. You turn the light on. Oh, you're 60. If you want, if you want, if you're going for the older crowd, you want to go to like Larry's Villa. Then you, you know, then you know you'll get the. Uh, Michael the Brown, if you're listening, <laughs> hire Marissa Tomei to strip the name. <laughs> or are we going to Larry's Villa? She might be there. Actually. God, no, not Larry's Villa. <laughs> Larry's Villa is so infamous. It got made fun of by Conan O'Brien. Yeah. While, I have to see this here, while he was here live. I have to see this. <laughs> Larry's Villa. Because um, I've I've always you, I've always did, been curious about it. I've always wanted you, uh, to go in. Did you go see uh, Conan live when he was doing that? I tour didn't. Thing? I wanted nope. to do so bad. The, okay, the officially you, kicked from TV yeah. tour or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, when it was like in the middle of the show, it was oh, an intermission. Um, and uh, Andy came out and did a mm-hmm. advertisement for yeah. it. With the setup was um, every time we come in, one of the local businesses sponsors us. So I guess it's something they did every, every time. Uh-huh, yeah. And today's local business is Larry's Villa. And as soon <laughs> as soon as Andy Richter said Larry's Villa, we all laugh. Like every, <laughs> not just like a roar, like ha booming laughter. <laughs> and he goes, because sometimes when you want good drink specials and depression era trim, look no <laughs> further than Larrysville. <laughs> I've I've always been so curious, but I'm I'm afraid to go in there alone. I'd have to be with like a big group of people to feel even somewhat safe going into Larry's villa. Oh come even, on! But even when she's trying, give Randy to, a little love in. But even when she's trying to be cruel, that it, yeah. you can definitely tell in her eyes that it gives the game yeah. away. That it's like she doesn't want to do this, but. She gets really uncomfortable letting people close to her. Oh, now he's just being a dick. Well, to be fair, she, she kind of did it first. <laughs> I know, yeah. He's totally getting back at her. I like his name's Big Chris. It's a great scene. I love it. Mm, yeah. Oh. God. I just noticed your earrings kind of look like and, uh, little ram horns. Yeah, yeah, and look, yeah I, and look I, I never she, noticed that before. And look at what she <laughs> and I love that little bit she did. I don't know if they talked about if it was in the script or Nofsky talked about how afterwards she just immediately sips up mm-hmm. that she's mm-hmm. hiding yeah. herself once again. It's it's the little and once again you're gonna hear things. this. It's the little yeah. things, the little moments. And he's like, you just want him just to not... Just stay there, Randy. Mm. Don't go out. Yeah, and I wonder if this is how so many wrestler sobriety ends. Yeah. And there it is. I just love that you could see it in the, in right there, this little... Mm. Yep. Hole. It kind of reminded me of Citizen Kane, you know, how sometimes like little moments of Charlie and the Kane. I'm sorry, Charlie and the, the, the window, right? You can see him reflected. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our and there's ROH. Mm-hmm. No, no, is it? No, it's not. It's I think it's a pro wrestling gorilla. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. I know that uh, K Quick is in this. Was oh. this when he wasn't signed? 
he actually they, they did this movie. He was assigned, and then he was signed. There he is, right there. Yeah. K. Quick, or you know him as what? K. Crush. No, now he is um, Ron Killings. Our truth. Our truth. But back then he was K. He was K. Quick. He was, and then, then he, he was, was K. Ron Crush. K. No, he, then was, he was. Uh, I think around this time when he was doing his TNA run, he was Ron, Ron the Killings. Truth, Ron the Truth Killings. And now he's what is he again? Our truth. Our yeah. truth. Yeah. <laughs> and he got him in trouble. So that's why I kind of find it funny because I imagine that this is Ron Killings and he immediately, like, I can just imagine like a WWF agent right there in the back who watched it and like, okay, you're hired. And then he goes, we're going to give you an imaginary little boy as your best friend called Little Jimmy. We're not kidding. <laughs> Which actually kind of worked. Yeah. It kind of worked. But this is what, it's going back to this whole thing of like he's resor- he's referring back to what he yeah. once was, or yeah. I should say, what he always was. That's what happens so, when Marissa Tomei breaks your heart. Yeah. So he's pulling a flare. Yeah. But sometimes it just gets to a point to where you're too old for this sort of thing. That you have this to. My kind of bar, right? You have here. to grow up. <laughs> Michael Brown better be taking you these kind of bars. <laughs> I swear. If he doesn't, we're gonna we're gonna take over. We're like, hey, Mike, just sign the piece of paper here. <laughs> Uh, that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> that is the first time I've ever Jeez. heard any of this party like. I don't think party, party like a fireman. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And this is just how pathetic it is. I love. But... I love this part. Yeah. When you know, the person walks in. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> See, I don't know. The, the snorting coke in the bathroom. Yeah, that's. That's pathetic. Getting well, apparently, a tri- she has a thing for fire. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, Randy, what have you gotten yourself into? I'm surprised she didn't make it. Actually, uh, wear this, actually, <laughs> this is his room. You just haven't seen all of the trailer. <laughs> oh boy, I forgot about the boots. <laughs> <laughs> and that's his next gimmick. He's going to be Randy the Fireman. <laughs> It's going to be the next big thing that every promoter gives all their wrestlers. It used to be the cowboy. Yeah. Now it's the fire. You remember when Steven Regal was a real man's man? That's going to be his tag team partner. Oh, he's going to be part of the spe- remember Special Forces? Special Forces? You got to tell me, you know what I'm What's going on here? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, even even Malcolm is is disgusted. <laughs> but he's an American. <laughs> I am a real American. Fight for the rights of every man. <laughs> and just goes to show you how ultimately how still selfish he is as a mm. as a character. He couldn't just sleep it off with the fireman chick. <laughs> yeah, the the story structure is kind of told through the way his character, you know, the way his character arc is. Is that you know yeah. he's got to hit that low point before you know he has the the final match at the end where the movie hits its climax. Spoiler! Oh, I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. If, if you're spoil. watching the wrestler and listening to this commentary, then you've never seen the movie before. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's because why do you own this movie if you never watch it? Yeah, this is this is when things go to shit. I mean, it's one of those where I do imagine it, like other wrestlers who went through this and just, or just not just any, just any entertainer, just anybody, because this isn't is necessarily you know wrestling. It could be anybody. If you were a distant father or distant mother that you didn't know how to, you know, interact with your kids or how to be there for them because you're always away, you're always at your job, and that you do become like a distant figure in their life. You're not. You know, father or mother, you're just a person. (laughs) 
I promise the next film I pick is going to be happier. Huh? I promise the next film is going to be happier, folks. I, <laughs> no, you know, are you sure that you get? You to don't know that. that. It's my pick. Yeah, you don't. Know <laughs> no, I mean the next film I pick. The next one you oh. pick. Okay. Yeah, not the I. Well, I'll. Well, <laughs> okay, but would you say that the next one I have coming up is happier than this? I don't know which is the one you got. Yes, you do. Do I? I? Yeah, oh. I've already told you. Yeah. I forgot. Hmm. Well, it's well for you, folks. <laughs> Again, I have to bring over how many times do you, how many times do you think Ric Flair's gone through the exact same thing? Just not him, just any you know, Jake Roberts probably as well. Although on the inverse, I think Hulk Hogan might have might have gotten too close to his daughter. Oh god. He, yeah, Hogan has an obsession with his daughter that's kinda To of, the point where wasn't he dating <laughs> a woman that looked exactly like his daughter? I thought he married that woman. Ugh. Do you remember when Bubba the Love Sponge videotaped Hogan having sex with his wife? I, I remember, the only reason I remember, I know, he, no, the only reason I remember that is because uh, I, I, when I, it was because when that happened, Justin would not leave me alone about wanting to see that movie. I've, I've seen that. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. Hogan's got a big dick. And of course, I asked Justin a logical question. Well, does that mean you need to watch Scott Steiner's movie? And he's and like, I would buy Scott Steiner's movie. <laughs> Which I 100% believe he would. It's a funnier sex tape than the Kim Kardashian one. Funnier? <laughs> well, yeah, it's Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Just because it's Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Does he rip his shirt off? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, but he does rip the condom off. <laughs> does he drop the leg on her before she comes on her face? That's, uh, that's actually how he does it. <laughs> Actually, he drops his cock like he, like he drops his leg. Yeah, I want to point out we're we're caught, we're saying all this in front of like probably the one of the most devastating one of the scenes. most emotional scenes in the movie. Yeah, and by this point he's like, that's it. What's their <laughs> what's their live for? He can't even find joy now, do you in think getting we, potato salad. Now, anymore. do you think if you go to Germany um, and their potato salad is nothing like what we call German potato salad? Oh we God. should be pissed. <laughs> oh, now this. Oh God, we can all agree we've had that one customer, right? Yeah. I had a cu- so fucking picky. There was a customer at the restaurant I used to work at. It was a Mexican restaurant who came in and wanted to order meatloaf and gravy. Jesus. <laughs> From the Mexican restaurant. <laughs> now, we were right next door to a cafe, so it was able to be pulled off. But what? And, but what's the purpose of going to a Mexican restaurant if what you're going to order is meatloaf and gravy? <laughs> Oh my god. Uh. I love that. <laughs> That's great. They didn't know deli counters had a rush hour. <laughs> they can. No, they, yeah. But the thing is, at grocery stores, I found it's really random when their rush hours are. Really? Well, sometimes I notice, like, when, usually, like, four, I get noticed on weekdays, like, at, at four o'clock, that's no, when it, no, it really is. I have, wo- I have woken up really, really weird and wanted to get a snack and I realize I don't have it and I go to Walmart. Mm-hmm. The line is packed. Mm-hmm. What, what time of day is this? I've been woken up at, like, three in the morning. What? And I'm like, oh man, I want to get some cereal. I don't have any cereal, so I go there just to get like a bo- box yeah. of cereal. It's packed. <laughs> God. I guess it's the folks who got off their, you know, their shifts and they sleep during the day. I, I was told that if you ever want to meet a stripper, mm-hmm. the be- the best place to go is Walmart at around three to five in the morning because that's when the A team of strippers gets off. Well, hold on, I gotta write this down. Walmart. Three to five, seven yeah, in the three morning. Five, three, three to five in the morning. Because around five, that time okay. is when the A the A team, the creme de la creme of strippers, oh god, this part. get off of work. Okay, I have jotted that down. Oh god, this. I, I know it's. Coming I know. Up. I hit the scene. Yeah. This, no, don't. God. Mm. Oh, he's performing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Of course, he could have just said he quit, 
and, and I just, walked out. And I just, but no, he makes a fucking show of it. And I love yeah, it. Yeah, he's put on a show because he knows how to. He knows probably in his career how to be a heel, right? How do you do? Yeah. Smearing the blood on his face and doing that. <laughs> and not only that, but knowing the knowing how to essentially get himself hurt without really being hurt. Yeah, yeah. He probably yeah. knew exactly, yeah. you know, how to cut himself. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. God though. Oof. But still, the thumb. Ugh. And that's old the first chum. <laughs> old chum. Man, it's Randy. Randy. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Yeah. See, so now it's like just denying who... Because he's just trying to find whatever happiness he has in mm-hmm. his life. Is... Yep. I, man, I don't give a shit. I just want to wrestle. Because, <sighs> okay. I mean, I have to admit, though, as I am... Get, I, you know, we are getting older, right? We are getting in our 30s, right? What and the just, fuck ever, Grandpa? Well, <laughs> no, but I just want to say that this is something I do think about, and this film definitely does present this idea of it, like, what if it does get to a point in your life where you're getting older and older and older, and you really begin to lose sight of things around you, and that you're just trying to try to go back to the glory days, as it were. And yet, you can't. They're gone. Okay, you see how, how far he's gone. He... He went to the nice uh, salon. He got the tanning bed. And now he has to do his hair himself, and yeah. got the tan in the can. And you know what the weird th- working and, out in his bathroom. You know what? Here's the the weird thing about all that. If he had lived his life the way he's living it now and doing all the stuff himself, mm-hmm. he would not be where he is. Yep. True. Again, it's one of those. I want that necklace. It's yeah, great. Yeah. It's, one, it's one of those <laughs> things where um, you can tell the wrestlers who hmm. are successful in what they do, not by how long they're remembered, but how long they can keep away with from the ring. I like that that cro- that nice cut. How it goes from her him preparing in the mirror to her preparing mm-hmm. in front of the mirror. I thought that was really nice. So basically, would she be one of those A team strippers you were talking about, Cameron? <laughs> Are you, are you fucking kidding? Yes. <laughs> so she'd be the one shopping at Walmart. If I saw Marissa Tomei shopping at Walmart and I didn't <laughs> yeah, you, do anything... Yeah, you beat up that, that Transformer. Now, now, can't we see a movie with Mickey Rourke as the wrestler fighting the Transformer? Like, where's Actually, that you know, movie? Let's put it this way. <laughs> I would watch one of the Transformers movies and Mickey Rourke was the main character or he, or he voiced one of the Transformers. <laughs> well, that'd be good. <laughs> We uh, we gotta find Megatron. We gotta we gotta save the planet. Come on, oh, guys. Oh, I thought you were talking. Oh, Stallone's gonna be in it as well. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to see that. Well, that's it. That'd be the best. We're gonna fight Starscream. And we're gonna find Megatron. And he's not gonna do nothing. Nothing is over with it. Now, Bumblebee, you can give up, but that ain't you. <laughs> Yeah, life is a fantasy of rainbows. You get out there. Life's not about not being able to transform. It's about not being able to transform and then transform again. <laughs> Can we get Arnold and Fold it's going to and just stride them all? I'll me lock transform. See, okay, I'd be, like, be like, like the expendables, but they're all played by transformers. No, no, no. The, the expendables same. versus transformers. <laughs> no, I would I would rather have all the actors just voice the transformers. Okay. Did any of you guys see the latest Transformers movie? Yeah. No. Okay. When Grimlock is on stage, how does he? Does, I'm uh, not on stage, but on screen. How does he speak? Does he use like the like, me Grimlock? Does he talk? I don't, like even, that? I don't remember. The, 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 tra- the, the, the Transformers Rex. Transformers Rex doesn't talk. It's just a fuck that. Yeah. Oh. Then I now I do not want because see it. because they're animal transform like they're not gonna. That's what fuck yeah. that. Then I have no interest yeah. in watching. N- none of the dinosaur or animal transformers. Because you know talk. because if you if you know Transformers in the cartoon Grimlock talks like me Grimlock not oh. monster me Grimlock key. Oh, and it's the Cat Miller. I, I I I liked when he danced. I just like him in general. I always thought he was a good, charismatic guy. And I love the fact that he's become a used car salesman. Yeah, I know. They mentioned that at the beginning. That he's oh. having luck with his used car lot in Arizona. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, just, I just remember this. Do you know who actually runs, a, I think, a strip club or a gentleman's club here in Las Vegas who is a former wrestler? No, I do not. Watch out for the whole train. <laughs> That's right. Charles Wright, a.k.a. Papa oh, Shango. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Oh, <laughs> Everyone be quiet. <laughs> I'll be in my bunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what uh, what strip club uh, does he Oh, run? she's still on screen. Does he own oh, Cheetahs? I Cameron? guess. Cheetahs? I haven't been to that or one. Or something? We'll find uh, that out. Uh, uh, 
We'll try to get you to meet the Godfather. I'd rather meet her. Mm. Fuck. <laughs> God. Oh, fuck. But even then, fuck. though. But the, but the thing <laughs> you might say about it, it's like, you can tell, it's like, I don't give a shit. I know she yeah. doesn't give a shit, and that's what makes it disturbing. That she's that <laughs> fucking... Disturbingly hot. <laughs> because she's that fucking hot. She doesn't want to be there, but she's... Fuck! But no, I mean... <laughs> she is actually so hot, I'm getting angry. <laughs> It's like, this is bullshit. And I need to stop. Like, hey, collect your ones, say! <laughs> and that sounds fucked up. But that, and the, yeah. the weird thing is, they're not done with you yet. That's exactly the same way that, you know, you can talk about wrestlers. Mm -hmm. The fans mm -hmm. aren't done with you yet. Exactly. Yep. And there you go. It's just like... <laughs> I like At that. least she didn't have to cut her thumb in order. And, to th and that's where we <laughs> found out her real name, right? Her real name, Pam. Or no, she no, say? he, no. Uh, she tells him earlier yeah, when Pam. they go f yeah. uh, clothes shopping for his yeah. daughter, Pam. Now it's hard to believe that I mean, get, I get, that um, you know, that much of a money making match if it was the match of his career that there was mm -hmm. never a rematch. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people forget this, but you know, WrestleMania three, yes, Hogan versus Andre, there was a rematch to mm -hmm. that. So he this is, didn't leave the money on the table, so it's hard to believe that this is the first time they've ever had a rematch. He is so the Iron Sheik. <laughs> Iran, number one, <laughs> USA, hak <laughs> to it. Yeah, that's pretty good deal. There is no way a show that had a star like that, it, it, the star like the, on the level of Randy Ryan Robinson, let's say he's the Hulk Hogan of this universe, yeah. and he's at a Ring of Honor show, Wrestling his arch enemy, and they're just charging twenty bucks. Mm -hmm. True. As regional as but, you can argue, Ring of Honor well, is, they would charge. Money. Maybe, but I'm just thinking that just goes to sh it's just playing into that whole thing. Oh, yeah, like, this know. is where oh, you yeah. where you've gone. I guess. Yeah. I like the, the, the you can see the little tear rolling down his eye because mm -hmm. like he knows he's gonna die. Yep. They shouldn't do this, but this is this is, this the only is thing. it. This is the only thing that he had his gives last, him life. He had, he had his last chance. He fucked it up. Yeah. But you have this one of this, there's just so many wonderful little moments that are Adrian. This is the Adrian moment. It right is, here. but yeah. it's like what if Rocky decided to be really mm. sad? <laughs> hmm. There you go. Don't give a shit about me. Yes, we do, Randy. I'm here. God. I'm really here. You call that? You call it USA. Oh, and that's perfect <laughs> where that plays. Because they mentioned Guns N' Roses, mm -hmm. how much they love that. Now, this I love that outfit. That's so great. <laughs> and that outfit is very reminds me a lot of uh, Superstar Billy Graham. Oh yeah. Oh, not, not so much the tights, but the vest. And one thing that, I, that if you guys know if you didn't, uh, this was actually filmed in front of a live Ring of Honor crew that Randy and Ernest. It was like this case, Mickey and Ernest put on an actual match, mm. and they filmed it. Which and, is a great idea to make it feel very natural and yeah. real, and which the whole movie, you know, feels that way. And so. actually, and what happened was during the filmmaking of it, the audience wasn't really getting into it because when they're trying to film it, then Darren Aronofsky, I believe, went out there and was like, "Listen, fuckers, these I know I'm that blunt. These guys are like Hulk Hogan and Iron Sheik. You need to boo the fuck out of him, and you need to cheer the fuck out of him." <laughs> and then they complied. <laughs> But actually, I should spoil this, because the film ends on an ambiguous note. We don't really know mm -hmm. what happens. Yeah. We have our interpretations. We'll get to that. Which, but, is, which is good. Yeah. I like that. But like this that. is... That's you want to know what happened? This is what happened. Uh, Randy hits the Ram Jam on uh, the Ayatollah. Ayatollah. He pins him. One, two, three. He gets up. He celebrates. And he walks to the back. The end. So, yeah, that's what happened. That's all. Hmm. 
And I think his ear injury it references uh, when uh, Roddy Piper was in the dog collar match with uh, oh, Greg Valentine. Good point. It was Greg Valentine, right? Yes. And Valentine uh, actually busted uh, Roddy Piper's eardrum in a yeah. dog collar match. God. And Roddy didn't quit. Yeah. Roddy kept going even though his equilibrium was full, was thrown off. And this is one of those fake wrestling injuries. Roddy's eardrum really burst. Hmm. And you could see the blood coming from his ear. <laughs> now, we all know how Jim Cornette felt about this, where he thought oh, it he, went too far. He thought this film was, yeah, I was going to mention this when it came to wrestlers, what they thought of the film. Jim Cornette thought it was extremely depressing, that he thought, like, look, we know about the some of the wrestlers' lives that have gone mm. in the shitter, but this is just way too much, he felt. There's that. Then you had wrestlers like we mentioned, Roddy Piper, who was really behind the film. Like talked about how much he loved it, how he felt this told the truth. But yeah, I mean, very it's, emotional. it's, it's, it's a, a movie. You have to dramatize it a bit. Yeah. It, it, told the, it, yeah. it, it told the truth about no. some of them. Again, like... Um, no, hold on a second. Holy sh... Mickey <laughs> Rourke fucking did that. He fucking did what a Hurricane Rana. Yeah. If he did that in the 80s, best freaking wrestler ever. <laughs> Now, um, this movie is actually very accurate to some wrestlers, but I even think Roddy Piper, who uh, who uh, said this this film told the truth about a lot of wrestlers, I don't know if it's Piper's truth, because Piper's had a pretty good life. I mean, yeah. he partied fucking hard. Oh, yeah. But... But, but, I mean, basically tell the, what he... Because Piper was one of the boys, right? He was like... When, when we yeah. say that, we mean that he wasn't... Like a prima donna, that he'd get his own little room and change. No, Which is he one would, of his problems he had with Hogan. Didn't yeah, right? yeah. That he would go and change with the boys. So, that's, so when he tell, talks about how it told the truth, that this was like something that they experienced or they saw other wrestlers going through it. Like, who were wrestlers that did not change with the boys? Hogan. Uh, Ultimate Warrior decided yeah. not to change when he became champion. Um, did yeah, any I, of the I, WCW guys? Like... I don't even. Know, I, don't even I, don't think Fla- I don't think Flair did that or Sting did that. I don't even think Nash did that because from everything I understand, like even in the Click's heyday, and I could be wrong, the Click even changed with the boys. Yeah. Because Scott Hall Uh-oh. talks a, talks a lot about uh, the wrestlers' court. Take that, Iran. I mean, you know about the wrestlers' court, right? Yeah, the wrestlers' court is when like a, a wrestling veteran, in some cases, the Undertaker would be one. Was he the judge? He was know? the judge. And then something screwy would have happened, and they'd go to wrestler's court. Yeah. There's a wrestler's court? Yeah. Okay, what it is, if there's a dispute backstage with the boys, uh, they'll both sides will present their case, uh. and there's actually a jury of peers that you know, with <laughs> the judge, great. like David said, in the WWF during a, a certain areas, and probably even up until he became 100% part-time, mm. Undertaker was the judge. <laughs> yep. Where even if you were, like, a big guy, like the number one top draw, you listen to Taker. Yep. <laughs> Taker's one of the legitimate tough guys backstage where you don't want to fuck with him. I would even say even now that he's older, you still wouldn't want to piss Undertaker off. And I just, what I also love about this is how out of shape the Ayatollah is. I really do like that. <laughs> well, the weird thing is he kind of reminds me even of uh, Iron Cheek when he was in shape right now. True. And he did it again, Mickey. What the fuck? <laughs> Affa did a damn good job training Mickey. Because that's the other thing is that you do have to, once again, believe in the character. And that is, you know, if you're going on this emotional, you know, journey, you have to believe in the fact that he is, he could be a wrestler. He actually participated in the WrestleMania match, didn't he? Uh, afterwards, there was a match between Jericho and the Piper, Steamboat, and Snuka. That's right, Snuka, that murderer, was still wrestling at the age of 70. Um, and afterwards, Mickey got in and he not, and he popped Jericho in the face and he broke his hand. <laughs> and uh, this is actually what wrestlers will actually do in the ring if somebody's actually hurt. They'll, like, take over for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Triple H when he tore his quad. Yeah. I think one of the first times. Yeah. Um, which was just amazing because somehow Triple H finished that match. Oh, but he was still able to do that. I remember when uh, Vince tore his quad and just sat in the ring like an idiot. Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> but this... this Because in a way, I have to admit that sometimes this movie is a little is a little hard to watch. Inseguri. A little hard to watch. I'll give you Inseguri if you mess with me. Oh. No, no, no. It wasn't Inseguri. Oh, Shining, Shining Wizard. Wizard. Yeah. I'll give you Shining Wizard. 
Yeah. But this is just like, that's it when he looks and she's not there. And for all intents and purposes, that's it. Now he wants to die. Because mm -hmm. we Give don't... Give him the Ram Jam! <laughs> <laughs> Diving headbutt, which... Some wrestlers still do, and that some wrestlers still do. But the thing is, I think a uh, diving headbutt is unjustly yeah. blamed because if you watch the way the diving headbutt actually works, it's not much of a headbutt. Because yeah, but if you keep doing it, the no, whiplash. I mean, like, yeah. And, yeah, it depends, I guess. But yeah, but this moment, it's but sorry, just I like, thought the ram jam was more of a double elbow drop. Huh? I thought it was a headbutt. It's supposed to be like the ram yeah. horns kind yeah. of thing. That's yeah. the way it's supposed to look. Yeah. And that's basically it, because he knows he's going to die. Essentially, what, ascend to heaven? And... Now I must ask. Nathan, do you think Randy died? I would, I would say probably, but... Even if he did, it's still kind of a happy ending, because he died doing what he loved. Yeah. Cameron? I think he died, and then everyone who abandoned him felt really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think he died. Oh, and we gotta we gotta have Bruce, <laughs> Bruce Springsteen for his song "The Wrestler," which was snubbed at the Oscars. Oh, Bast that's right, yeah, bastards! They should have won over that Jai Ho Slumdog Millionaire bullshit. Yeah, that was yeah. yeah. Is that the movie that won that year? Slumdog, Slumdog Millionaire. Millionaire. Oh yeah. God, and that caused a big brouhaha. Because it, was a, it was a fine movie. It was one of those movies where when it came out, everyone was just like, said it was the, it was the best movie of the year. and it yeah. got So it got, for me, it got a little overhyped. So when I eventually yeah. saw it, I but was did like, Slumdog okay, that was Million, good. Did Slumdog but, Millionaire yeah. take 12 years to make? <laughs> and it actually did take a while for it to get off the ground. In fact, there was, when they were done with the movie, they were considering to just go and release it uh, on video. But then they played it at oh. Toronto and it went over crazy. Um, speaking of that, I will... I like how they list all the, all yeah. the wrestlers there too, individually. Um, well, then I would just flat out say when it comes to this movie, this was one of my favorite films of 2000, 2008 that I think that... Oh, yeah, me too. It was, it was sort of like a shame that essentially my, you know, some of my top five favorite picks, you know, The Dark Knight, Wally, -E, this, weren't nominated. And I think that did help lead to the Academy Awards opening up to 10 nominees, mm -hmm. which in my opinion has been successful because you've got a lot of films that I, probably I personally nominated. think that's Could've too been. many. Like, they have gone five... Like, I understand there's a window. Like, it can be, it can be between, was it seven and ten or something It can like be that. between five and ten Five now. and ten, yeah. Because so, if they had gone from, like, five to seven, yeah. like, that feels like a good number. But if you raise it all the way up to ten, I think that kind of takes away oh, a see, little bit what makes it special to be uh, nominated uh, for Best uh, Picture. Yeah. So... Yeah, we know. Do you know if Samoa yeah. Joe's part of that family? No. Yeah. So you guys have my opinion on it. Nathan, I like how one of the no. interns is named Super Bad. Even the interns <laughs> yeah. have like wrestling type names. It's great. So Nathan, <laughs> what do you think of the wrestler? I love it. It's a great movie. But one one of possibly my favorite Darren Aronofsky movie. I mm -hmm. I, I think that's definitely and probably my top two favorite Darren Aronofsky movies. Cameron, it's great. It's gonna be great. It's, it's great. great. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's, it's gonna great. be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. <laughs> it was great. It, it, it was great. And I think you can show. <laughs> and, and this is the movie I would show to any um, egotistical fuckface who likes to say that you know likes to point out, oh, wrestling's fake. You're just going there, going, yeah, it's planned out. But this is what some of the guys really go through. Genius. Yeah, and that these are real people. Yeah, going even out if you there. don't like it, and you don't think it's good. It doesn't change the fact that this is the passion for a lot of people and this yeah. is what the performers that you choose to disrespect mm -hmm. do for people to entertain them. So is most forms of entertainment is planned out. Even if you look at like yeah. things like football, yeah, you plan ahead. Yeah. There's a, a certain game plan that you, and you know, mm -hmm. but it's, I mean, yeah, you could say wrestling is a little more, it's more like the end result is a little yeah. more uh, planned out, but still it's, you know, mm -hmm. and any form of entertainment is, is, <laughs> You know, and planned we, out ahead of time in and, some and way. And when it comes so. to, to uh, be a good wrestler, you have to have so many different sets of skills. Like, it's mm -hmm. a lot more than just knowing how to wrestle. It's knowing how to work the crowd, know exactly when to pick your spot and what to say, or in some cases, when to shut your mouth <laughs> and let your words do the talk, and let your uh, actions do the talking. And did it pass by, but they mentioned um, Larry Sabisco was one uh -huh. of the announcers at the beginning. Kevin Kelly, those are... 
And actually, Sabisco this year is going to the yeah. WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, I remember, was the a, I remember there was a uh, rumor Brutus that um, Ava Marie from WWE was going to host the Hall of Fame this year, uh-huh. and it was uh, it was proven false. And I hope it stays false. Who is she? Uh, she's this re- she's this um, woman in the WWE with really bright fire red hair who has no talent except looking hot. Oh, I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah. And um, as soon oh, as you said the, red hair, I was she's like, on okay, yeah. She's on Divas. She's a, because she's. She's on totally. And, uh, well, <laughs> and, uh, she, but, the she thing, nice? but the thing, but the thing is, she knows nothing about wrestling at, at all. And um, the and the joke that somebody posted was, "Larry Nabisco is he the cookie guy?" <laughs> that was a caption that somebody said that she would do at the Hall of Fame. Uh, and you know what the funny thing is, is that I actually would buy that that she would do something like that. So, but. Yeah, the movie is over, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. That's the wrestler. That was the wrestler. Um, now, uh, Nathan, stuff. do you want to let us know or hint at what you're bringing in? Well, next week? Um, next week I thought I would take us all on a little trip to another land, another Earth, if you will, kind of in the middle of it all. I'll just kind of leave it at that. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> we're 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 going to hell. <laughs> oh. But, yeah. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all enjoy your WrestleMania weekend. Please, if you can, please don't, watch... Please don't watch WrestleMania. Watch the wrestler if, instead. Or, if you don't or, or just yeah, play true. No Mercy on your N64 yeah, yeah. if you still have Or it. watch old WrestleManias. Watch yeah. old WrestleMania. See, I recommend... <laughs> or watch Ring of Honor. Yeah, I recommend... Let's see. WrestleMania 17 is a damn good WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. WrestleMania 20 is, in spite of the main event involving a certain murdering, head-butting Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> watch uh, the Eddie Guerrero match. Isn't that all Canadians? But oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, WrestleMania three might not have a lot of great matches, but it has yeah. two of the most iconic yeah. matches of all time. And the show stealing match, of course, being yep. one of those. Yep. Uh, wait, what was the uh, Iron Man match one? That was WrestleMania Eight? twelve. I think Wrestle- not. Yeah, twelve. 12, 12, twelve was the one with uh, the I Quit match between Brett. And- That's thirteen. That's thirteen. Yeah. So watch thirteen. You know, just pick out great the greatest matches and just make the best of WrestleMania. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this is Nathan. Uh, this is Nathan. <laughs> Hi, Nathan. <laughs> I'm David. How Jesus. are you? Wait a second. Take the match, Nathan. <laughs> well, um, let's find out who David really is. <laughs> this is David. This is Nathan. This is Nathan. <laughs> this is Nathan. I'm Nathan. <laughs> I'm Nathan. <laughs> Kill Kenny. I'm Cameron. Uh, and this is an episode of The Commentator signing off. God damn it. I'm Nathan. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Take it easy, guys.